beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so on you and you here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed we want to see how God will grant us grace so that I'll finish fast. Um, by God's grace, we'll make sure that we hasten every activity before my coming up so that we can have time for the word. Sorry, this is not a regular ministry. And so you find out that there's no room for drama and all of these kinds of things. Praise the Lord. And, and all the things we believe that days will come when we'll have time for that. Hallelujah. Announcements and all of these kinds of things. Praise the Lord. Tonight your life will change in a dramatic way. In the name of Jesus Christ. What I'm about to teach you will transform your life. Honestly, I'm determined this year to make sure by the grace of God that we all experience the reality of the rain. Let it not just be a song that we keep singing again and again and again. Hallelujah. We're trusting that God will really, really grant us grace. And so all the teachings that will be coming, please, I want you to pay attention, especially today's teaching. Hallelujah. I was talking to the Lord a few days ago about us, the house, and um, I really appreciated him for what he's doing. But let me start on this note. I'm a bit concerned um, at our pace of both spiritual progress and otherwise hallelujah i am very very humbled i as we travel around ministering the word of god i am amazed not not necessarily surprised but amazed at the impact and the transformation that this ministry and the teaching is bringing in the lives of people we we receive testimonies thousands and thousands of testimonies um, from lives but then every one of them come fresh they come very fresh and really impactful um, when we begin to share maybe one day we'll have the opportunity to share some of these testimonies and you won't believe the encounters, the breakthroughs. There are whole churches that play koinonia messages and just sit down under that anointing and get blessed. And there are all kinds of miracles that have happened to people. Liftings, encounters, you know. I think one of the greatest testimonies is the encounter that people have through the messages. Angelic encounters, heavenly encounters. They step into levels of the anointing. And some of them have never been here. Never been here. There are people, there are ministries, there are pastors that travel kilometers to come. And so I'm a bit concerned that we who are here, that God has granted us the privilege to directly sit down under this very heavy unction. 
I am a bit disturbed as to why the pace of our growth is a bit slow. Um, and I, I began to ask God because I care about us. I don't just care about myself. Left for me, I am, I am bent on walking with God and receiving testimonies from that relationship. But every true leader prides himself in the joy of the people. Hallelujah. If only the leaders succeed, we're the only ones getting blessed and prosperous and lifted and anointed, you know, and God is expanding and increasing our influence. Many leaders will rejoice at that, but my joy is to see that as we rise, everyone who sits under this anointing becomes a first-hand epistle of the vision. Hallelujah. So I'm a bit concerned. Honestly, I am. Um, not necessarily worried, but I began to ask the Lord because I know that the problem is not with the quality of the word. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, we may not be the best, but I think we have done well in bringing the word of God in due season. So I, I really began to talk to the Lord about it. I expect 10 times the results that we see in our lives. There are people who are afar off. Never seen me. Not even my picture. Some of them have had just one message. Just one encounter. Just one. There are people who have just one koinonia message. Just one. Koinonia teachings are so powerful. It doesn't matter which of them you get. You produce the same thing. Even if it's on marriage and what you need is healing. It doesn't matter. Just get that atmosphere. Hallelujah. And so I, I really, I want us to take, we are, not, we are not playing games. Praise the Lord. This is a real ministry. We are very disciplined and serious with the assignment that God has given us. There is a revolution going on in this nation. And I can tell you with all humility that we are contributing significantly to the spiritual renaissance that God is doing. Especially in the lives of the generations that are coming, I am humbled by those who have access to these teachings. I have met kings. I have met politicians. I have met nobles. I have met people who my level of life would never have afforded me to meet, all on account of the grace of God and what he is doing. Praise the Lord. And I expect that... Um, those of us who are sitting down, please volume, directly under this anointing, we should be able to walk first hand. Many of us have access to me. There's counseling sessions. Even after the meeting, we can, even if it's a handshake, a hug, whatever it is, you sit down directly under the worship, under the prayer, and all of that. And, and so it is either one of two things. Number one, either you are not really interested in pursuing this reality of the divine life to be at work in you. Hallelujah. Either there is a direct negligence or there is creeping in subtly the danger of familiarity. Hallelujah. Familiarity is a disastrous thing. It has a way of destroying you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. One time, Reverend Dr. Uma Upai shared a touching testimony many years ago. I heard him preach and he said that um, his brother and the brother's friend needed a miracle. And it was, it was a financial miracle. They really needed a miracle from God. And the brother went to him and said, um, can you give me some money? And he said, you're my brother, I can't deny it. And he gave him some money. But the friend came and said, man of God, I really need a miracle. And he prophesied and spoke to the person and said, your bands will never run dry. Two people, same need, different results. Hallelujah. There is, if your life does not change under this unction, I guarantee you something is wrong with your approach. God is in this place. Hallelujah. I was humbled by the testimony of our dear sister. And um, it doesn't take too much to see the hand of God. 
it just takes you being disciplined and follow instructions the problem with many of us is there is this spiritual stubbornness you know what we call i too know mentality physically see it's a it's a foolish thing when you don't have results in your life and you keep arguing with the words that come hallelujah have you seen students like that in class their cgpa is low they are not doing well yet they argue with the lecturer again and again and then those who are very serious, those who are exceptional, they sit down diligently. There is an attitude. Look, let me tell you. The ball is in your court. You have to choose. You see people changing. There are people who are changing. There are testimonies that are coming. You are the only one who is left. You can choose to argue it and watch sick people get healed and watch God change the story of people. Look at people oh my god look let me tell you if i begin to share with you some of these testimonies hallelujah very humbling testimonies of the hand of god hallelujah we are too small to doubt the might of god do you know how far god can take you brothers and sisters? forget about your age look if you want to receive from God, I'm speaking to especially many of us who are students, you must remove this student mentality and bury it and, and, and know that you are only a student for a few moments. Many of us, this dependency mentality has crippled us. You have graduated for five years now, but you still believe Koinonia is not a fellowship. Koinonia is an apostolic and a prophetic move of God. It's not some kind of campus thing for just young people. Hallelujah. Please be determined that there must be an evidence in your life. Hallelujah. There must be an evidence in your life, brothers and sisters. And this is, this is my goal. I cry before God every time I pray for us. And I say, Lord, please let your people, even if it means not blessing me, no problem. Status is changing, there's no more decline. I'm on my way it's to better days. Prophesy, that's what must happen to you. My status is changing, there's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. One more time, prophesy to yourself. Status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. I'm on my way. On my way. On my way to better days. Prophesy, you're on your way. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. It's a better day. It's a better day. It's a better day. Sing status is changing. Come on. Status is changing. The word of God is doing Somebody something to you. We're on our way. I'm on my way. Better day. There is a better tomorrow. I tell you, forget about today. My status is changing. There's no more decline. We're on our way to better day. We're on our way. We're on our way. On our way. That's the destiny of this ministry. To better days, we're on our way. On our way. On our way. On our way. We're on our way. On our way. To better days. To better days. We're on our way. On our way. You can choose to take the flight or not. But I tell you, God is going somewhere with us. To better days. Prophesy to yourself. It's part of the meeting. We're on our way. That His glory will change something in your life. I'm on my way. To better days. To better days. To better days. We're on our way. On our way. Day. 
it doesn't take time it doesn't take time hear me it doesn't take time it just takes having access to the keys it doesn't take a lot of stories and discussion there is what you can hold on to when you catch it you have caught it it will change your life men will talk they will only talk for nonsense you will only be moving like a star that cannot be stopped but the question is are you willing it's not enough to just listen there is no situation you are in that is the worst in the earth there are people in a worse situation but this word has taken them out of it and honored them it may look like there is a delay but you must tell yourself the glory of God is changing me this is already a word for somebody tonight you may not look like it brothers and sisters forget about it your status is changing there's no more decline you're on your way to better day let them laugh at you today your status is changing your status is changing there's no more decline there's no more decline you're on your way you're on your way to better day prophesy to yourself my status is changing spiritually financially in every respect I'm on my way I'm on my way to better day I'm on my way 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 Now pray and say Lord give me focus Help me to settle with the world Whatever distracts me whatever distracts me whatever is robbing my life i'm ready to be a student i'm ready to submit myself go ahead and pray i'm ready to lay down my pride to get what works i'm ready to submit myself i'm ready to lay down my pride i repent from arguing with the word give me the key so god let my hands handle them. Pray. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I lay down my pride. I lay down my pride. I submit to the word of God. I lay down every argument. Every vain talk. I submit to the word. I want to see results in my life. There is something I do not know. Show me, oh God. There is something that connects me to the next level. You are changing the life of others. Don't forget about me. I am willing. You are changing the life of others. I am willing. You are changing the story of others. I am willing. I take my eyes away from my failures. I take my eyes away from limitations. I take my eyes away from criticisms. I am not stiff-necked. I am not stubborn. I am malleable to your word. yes lord i submit to your word it has changed many it has produced champions and generals you to see your future and prophesy i'm on my way 
Oh, they will hear my voice. They will see his glory upon my life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We submit to your word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please pick up your Bible, First John chapter 5, verse 4. God bless you. Let's get straight to the word. There is a lot to talk about. First John 5, verse 4. Please pay attention. If you are here, sit down, sit down, sit down. God bless you. Please look up, everyone, before we read that scripture. I expect everyone coming for Koinonia to at least buy a book like this. Praise the Lord. All these pieces of papers we have that we throw powerful revelations on it. Get something like this. Please, pay attention. Just be a student for a while and let the world honor you. Forget about pride. Please, I beg you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Young and old rich or poor, whatever you, when you come to the presence of God, just follow instructions. Your next dimension is in the instruction you follow. Hallelujah. Don't be too, don't do big manism before God. For the kingdom is for children. Get a notebook. Get a good biro. Don't come around if, if, if you have devices or phones that you can you can, you know, record and write very well. Do so. Don't just sit down and be careless. When you are inviting others, let them know that they are not just coming for fellowship. Hallelujah. If you love them enough, buy it and give them. Buy it. There are lots of jotters that we get from wedding. Free. Huh? Instead of writing your problems on it and writing all the people that hurt you, why don't you bring it, sow it as a seed to somebody? get this, this is my own notebook there are many others like this it shows that you respect what God is teaching you in the book of Revelation when John saw everything, he told him write, he didn't say think about it, he didn't say crime it he said write, for these words are faithful and true when prophet Elisha was passing and the Shunammite woman perceived that this was a holy man of God when they decorated his room, they kept a table for him there so that he would write. The ancient wrote, you must write. Hallelujah. Please, when you come, that's why we have time to say hug one another. When we say hug, hug. When we say sit down and listen, no loitering around, walking around, pinching. This is, is demonic. It's not just bad, it's demonic. I'm telling you, it's, it's the spirit of distraction. Your mind cannot do too many things at once. Hallelujah. When the word is coming, that's when you remember that, oh, I, I need to do this. I need to do that. Somebody is pinging you. You are pinging the person. It's demonic. Pay attention. Hallelujah. Please, inside and outside, even if you don't have a seat, pay attention. Somebody is smiling and telling you, have you seen their uniform? Tell the person, please, don't distract me. I'm tired of my situation and my life must change. Don't distract me. If you say it once, you won't repeat it again. But by the time you start entertaining nonsense, in the middle of something powerful that should liberate you, the person will say, can you imagine? Was it uh, that we How much did you even say it? This is not the place to discuss all this for God's sake. Of course, we appreciate ourselves. But if you don't place value for the word, it will never change you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. First John chapter 5. You will thank me tomorrow. You may not like me today. But I love you too much to leave you the way you are. Many are already thanking me. And those who didn't listen are now listening in a painful way. Ancient words ever true. Changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts. Oh, let the ancient words 
1 John 5 verse 4. Everyone read is projected. One, two, read. And this is the victory that overcomes. What is it? Even replace our with my. Are you ready? Read it one more time. Even my faith. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 38 tells us that the just shall live by faith. Hebrews 10 verse 38. Media, you have to really help us today. Let's see how we can rush. I want us to finish on time. Hebrews 10 38. It says the just shall live by faith. In fact, frankly speaking, four times in scripture it is recorded that the just shall live by faith. But I'll just speak to Hebrews 10 verse 38. Hallelujah. It says, now the just shall live by what? Faith. But if any man draw back, draw back in what? In living by faith. It says, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. The just shall live. Let me interpret it for you. The quality of your life here on earth is dependent on your understanding of what faith is and how it works and this is what i'm going to be teaching you tonight what faith is and how it works the operation the dynamics that's what i would have taught last week but i was away and and the holy spirit told me no you must teach this my people need to hear it because they need to understand not just what faith is but how it works true bible faith that will produce results for you. Habakkuk chapter 2 from verse 4. It personalizes it in a very powerful way. I love the prophet. He said the just shall live by his faith. Not your neighbor's faith. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. He says behold his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. But the just shall live. By what? You will prosper. By your understanding of faith. You will step into the anointing and the glory of God. The quality, the measure of the glory and the grace of God you will see in your life is dependent on faith. There are, there are free seats here. Please let it be a tradition from now that every time we begin the service, if there are people standing, some people should sit on their seats. There is a vacant seat here. There is another one that I see. I don't know why there should be those seats. There are people standing outside. Please, ushers, you should know that. Let's, let's occupy all the seats, please. Hallelujah. The just shall live by his faith. Everyone say the quality of my life is dependent on my understanding of what faith is and how it works. One more time. Say the quality of my life is dependent on my understanding of what faith is and how it works praise the lord the subject of faith is very important for the christian experience um there have been many teachings on faith many many teachings in fact it's been the core teaching in many christian circles but there are a lot of misunderstandings about the true operation of faith and i trust that god will help us to be able to balance it i want to go really straight to the point and that very very fast hallelujah it's not that our regular or popular teachings on faith are wrong but many teachings about faith please look up many teachings about faith are not complete faith is an equation Faith is a formula. Are you following me now? And the components must be complete for it to work. Here and there, different men of God, preachers, great men and women of God have caught certain dimensions of what faith is and how it works. But to be able to give it a very balanced scope such that it works for those who practice it is where the problem has been. Hallelujah. Let's look at a few, um, 
a few incomplete revelations of faith that have come to the body of Christ. Number one, or some corrections on the imbalances. Number one, it has been popularly taught that faith is believing. No, that's not it at all. Faith is not just believing. That's the point I want you to get. Be to believe is very important. It's part of the equation of faith. But it's not all there is to faith. You see that? For somebody straight up, this is your deliverance. Because you have been taught that faith is just believing. If you believe, that's all. No, sir. I can tell you this categorically. That's not the whole equation. Belief talks of conviction. Belief talks of persuasion. When you believe a thing, it means that you are convicted. It means that you are persuaded. But it does not mean it will produce for you. Please, let's understand that. Belief is part of the process of manifesting faith, but not all of it. It is part of it, but it is not all of it. Please get this revelation. Oh, I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. Wonderful. That's only a step. That's not everything. Many of us, innocent believers, have stopped there. Believing God is not enough. Belief talks of your conviction. It is part of the overall equation, but it is not all of it. Number two. Faith. It's not just confession. Mm. Body of Christ. Faith is not just confession. I'm dictating it so that you will write. Confession is part of the process of manifesting faith. But not all of it. Please you must get this. Confession. In the equation of faith there is a point where confession comes in. But that is not all there is to Bible faith see that many of us have been taught by well-meaning people through the years in our different Christian circles across this nation and for those listening outside of this nation and all of that we've been taught that all there is to faith is just speak when you speak it you have it no sir I tell you the truth from God's word and from this Bible no sir it doesn't happen that way are you getting blessed hmm. so faith it's not just confession. You must realize this. If confession were all that there was to manifesting faith, I guarantee you there are people who would have been living like angels in the earth today because there are people who speak. I'm not against confession. There is a place. Remember in our teaching, spiritual laws. There is a place. Confession activates. There is a law of speech and sound. But that's not the only law. So it is true that confession is part of the process of manifesting faith. But not all of it. So believing is not all of it. It's only part of it. Confession is not all of it. It's only part of it. Number three. Faith is not just sowing seeds. Faith is not just sowing seeds. Many in the body of Christ have been taught that faith is equal to seed sown. No, sir. Sowing of seeds is also part of the equation. It's activating the law of seed time and harvest. But that is not all there is. You see the imperfections. So when I camp around believing, on one side we have those who believe. Just believe. And if you really believe, it happens. That's not exactly true. Hallelujah. Or confess. And if you confess, that's all. No, that's not exactly true. Or sow seeds. The moment you are trusting God for a house, you sow a seed for that house and go and rest and it happens. No, sir. No, sir. There is an equation. God is not a fraudster. Are you getting my point? That, those kinds of attitudes make God look like a 419er. Right? Right? And this is the reason why many people write against men of God in newspapers. They call us all kinds of things. They call us money mongers. They call us 
metaphysical people they call us talkatives because the incomplete teaching see let me tell you something especially for those of us who are men of God here or will be called into ministry realize that the church is an institution both a spiritual institution and a social institution we influence culture we shape people the mindset in Nigeria has largely been altered through the church for good now are you getting me Nigeria is said to be the most religious country in the whole world and this is because of the presence and the influence of the church there is a place that the church is playing in nation building and, and that, that puts a lot of pressure on the man of God. Because what that means is when you mislead people, it will create a ripple effect. Right? There are some of you, as you come and sit down under this anointing, as you hear the things I preach, you take them, some of you verbatim, back to your fellowships, your members, because you believe you want them to receive the same result. And that means I must be careful. If I teach you error, it becomes harder to correct it when it has left me. Are you seeing how error grows? Because when you go now and you are communicating to your churches or your groups or your fellowships, it may not be exactly as I said it. It will be based on what you understand. Right? By what I said. And so, the, the error keeps multiplying as it goes down the line. That's why we pray in the spirit for accuracy of utterance. So that we can communicate only that which is consistent with the mind of God. Are you blessed? So faith is not just believing. Never forget this. Number two, faith is not just confession. The word confess comes from the Hebrew word homologio. It means repeat as you have heard. So there is a place for that. The law of sound. The creative power of spoken words. But that's not all there is. Now I understand that there are times that we men of God take this aspect fragment by fragment. And, and I understand that. That's not what I'm talking about. There are people who have taken this in koinonia. We have examined all of these aspects in details one by one. And that is just for understanding. But when it comes to manifesting faith, you must be able to piece up all the fragments together. Are you getting my point now? To complete the equation. Otherwise, what you are doing it's not Bible faith. Say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Faith is not just about sowing seeds. Otherwise, what difference do we have with those who just give charity around? There are unbelievers who sow cars, sow houses. Is that true? Faith is a law. Never forget this. Faith is a law. Meaning it works anywhere it is accurately practiced. When it is released anywhere. A law is not something that is territorial necessarily. It's a principle that works anywhere it is diligently practiced. Salt is salt in Nigeria. Salt is salt in Bangladesh. Salt is salt in Israel. Salt is salt in Ukraine. Salt is salt in the Bahamas. Hallelujah. A gun is a gun in Nigeria. Right? A gun is a gun in Israel. What a gun can do in Nigeria, it can do in the UK. That's how faith is. It's a law. So write very quickly. The principles of manifesting the faith that works. The principle of manifesting the faith that works. I'm being very simple tonight because I really want us to get this. This is very core and foundational to our understanding and our success in life. The principle of manifesting the faith that works. Let me have two people please. Any two people? Please watch this. Stand here, Benga. You stand here. Watch this. Why is faith very important in the life of the believer? I want you to watch these people. This is... Hold this. This is God 
wanting to reach out to man this is the blessing watch this this is the breakthrough this is the healing this is the prosperity this is the new level of grace this is the insight are you getting me and here is man god so designed it that there is between god his desire to bless you and down at your end your desire to receive there is a law that connects that that law is called faith are you getting me now faith is important because it is the biblical platform that authorizes God's power to come into your life faith is the platform that authorizes God's ability my brother wants to see the power of God and it's not like God's ability is crippled Lord I want prosperity Lord I want healing Lord I want a miracle take me to another level I want to begin to have encounters in the spirit this is it this is it fully paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ right and this is another imbalance that preachers say the fact that a thing has been paid for does not mean it comes to you automatically is that true I can pay for something and tell you when you go to the supermarket it's paid for but that does not mean it has been delivered automatically see that faith faith is what connects you watch this this brother is standing desperate oh god would you not change my situation 10 years 15 years nothing has changed he's born again he believes in jesus he believes jesus died he's a tongue talker maybe he even pays tight in church so seed confesses the word but nothing is changing because this connection are you seeing it now god is asking that you authorize him there is a connection between the power of god and where it is needed in this earth realm faith are we following now between you and that breakthrough is your ability to connect are you willing to authorize the hand of his majesty he wants to come make no mistakes about it god wants to reveal himself as a loving god the love of god compels him to want to bless us but the problem is that we have not been taught how to connect stretch your hands promise and connect this this is faith once you lay hold on this then there is there's no limit again there are many of us thank you very much guys god bless you and i don't know what they were thinking about they're thinking they're always thinking impartation hallelujah praise the lord <laughs> that's why i gave the example from beginning so that your your desires will not be disappointed praise the lord could it be brothers and sisters that where you are where your family is is not just because the devil is so powerful are you hearing what i'm saying it's not just because you may not be praying correctly but maybe you have not been taught there is nothing wrong in not knowing the problem is when you are not willing to learn hallelujah faith is the platform never forget this this is why we need faith the platform that authorizes God's ability to be made manifest in a person's life God needs an authorization to step into your life because he gave man willpower when he said let them have dominion it became scripturally incorrect for God to interfere with man's life just like that no he needs an authorization that's why the Bible says in the book of Revelations it said behold I stand and what and what this is God speaking why will he be knocking wouldn't he just step in and say I created you open that door whether you want it or not no behold I stand and knock and I will keep knocking for as long as you are willing to open it tonight may we authorize God to step into our lives and you will see how small many situations are praise the Lord everybody say the faith of God is at work in me so what then is this equation of faith how does it work now that we know that faith is not just um, I would define faith at the end of the teaching 
but that the workings of faith, we have little bits and pieces of it. So here and there we confess the word. And we seem to have some consolation, but nothing major happens. Here and there we sow seeds. Very good. But then that's not all there is. Here and there we, we um, do what again? We are convicted. Oh Lord, I believe you. Are you not the God of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego? God says, yes, so I am. Huh? Are you not the one that parted the Red Sea? God will say, of course. Why are you not parting my situation? And God says, allow me. Authorize me. Authorize me. That's why the Christianity that makes God absolutely responsible for every outcome of your life is an irresponsible Christianity. I repeat, the Christianity that makes God absolutely responsible for every outcome of your life, meaning I don't do anything all I have to do, after all, I was a sinner. You are the one who died for me. I didn't ask you. Now that you have died for me, make sure that everything goes well. Give me tea. Give me bread. Do everything for me. See that? And there is an imbalance of the grace message that if not careful, stretches to that limit. Where it tells you God should do everything for you. No, sir. There are two dimensions of grace. Let me say it very quickly. I've listened to a lot of great mess, grace messages by different men and women of God and I agree absolutely with them in many aspects. There may just be a need for some little adjustments here and there. Who's that? What's wrong with her? She's sick. Huh? Who brought her? You came with her. Hold her now, protocol, and let her talk. Huh? please hold the mother and let the lady come come you you can hold the mother what's wrong her kidneys hold on please where are you taking her no bring her it's a spirit bring her It's not that she's restless and she wants to go out. It's the spirit. That's what happens to many people when they come for miracle service. Once I come up, you see them restless. They say, I'm going. It's a spirit. How long has this been? Huh? Can she talk? Mama, how are you? How long are you? Her brother. How long has this been? Her kidneys are what? Renal failure. Shika, you believe that Jesus will change all this? As we worship in your presence, there is healing. The Holy Spirit's gentle touch is flowing. Time. Come on, sing. Imagine this where your mother, Jesus, we believe. Jesus, there is Don't cry. In your name. Don't cry. In the name of Jesus, the anointing is on all of you, all three of you, right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. I cause this devil of darkness in the name of Jesus Christ. I command brand new kidneys right now. Mommy, brand new kidneys in the name of Jesus. I cause that devil of infirmity. I see you in the spirit. Go in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Renal failure, I cause you by the blood of the eternal covenant. I curse you. 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 Hallelujah. Mama, look at me. 
Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I am healed. I am. Shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I am. I am. Look at me. Everybody leave her. Leave her alone. Come. 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 Help her. Come. Help her. Hold this please. Help her. That devil is a liar. Please put this in. Walk. Come. Leave her. Don't hold her. Just guide her. Come. Come. Just turn around. Turn around. Help her. Turn around. Come. Kidney failure. That devil is... Look at she's happy. Look at what is happening. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Come. That devil is a liar. Let her come. Let her come. Help her. Just guide her. Let her come. That devil is a liar. Lift your legs, mama. Go ahead. Lift your legs. Lift your legs. Lift your legs. In the name of Jesus. Listen. This is witchcraft. Your mother would have died on Sunday. They would have told you this woman is dead. She would have slept like that and woken up. Because as I looked, I saw the spirit. And I was looking, I said, what is this? And they were carrying her out. Look, it's better for them to come and die here than to get up. We are not playing games. This just came to prove the teaching. I'm about to say some other things. You must believe. They, they believed God, but they didn't stop there. They would have stayed in Shika, and this woman would have died because I see in a vision, Sunday, they would have said it's over. Huh? Don't cry. Don't, don't cry, gentlemen. In the name of Jesus. Mama, I assure you, you will come back and stand here to give your testimony. That wicked spirit that has been tormenting you. Huh? Go and look. Has she been eating? She has not been eating. Because the Holy Ghost is ministering to me that Mama is hungry. Find something for her to eat. God bless you. Take her. Lift your hands and let's bless his name for one minute. Please sit down, sit down, sit down. Let's hurry up. Let's continue. Sorry about that. There is a spiritual strategy for manifesting faith. Just like we saw. I don't know how long our mother has been. But in seconds. You can authorize the power of God. See. I already sense the healing anointing. So as you are listening to me. If you are sick here. This is always what happens. Because when once, one miracle happens. The water is stirred. Right? Very important. Brothers and sisters listen. It's not like these guys. Could not have prayed for mama there is nothing special about me this is what i want you to understand the goal i know some of you are saying i don't agree there's just listen to what i'm telling you you know you know as i preach i i discern your thoughts i know what you are agreeing with and what you are not agreeing with Hallelujah. The equation of faith. Let me give you an equation of faith that if you practice, I guarantee you are touching the integrity of the maker of heaven. You will be shocked at what your life will become. It will begin to produce immediate results for you. Immediate results. Hallelujah. Pray in tongues for one minute as we prepare to receive this. We are hurrying up. Please take it serious. Say, Lord, open my eyes. Don't just hear. Don't just look. See. Rabati shelama hariyaba la kaparusa pratigede baladaba. Inside and outside, pray in tongues. Participate. Rapata baladaba kata pratigede balade bos. Kop rati shela pratiya. Kata baladaba kapratigede balade bos. Open our eyes. We submit to you, Great Spirit of God. Open our eyes. Sh 
And this is the faith that overcomes even our faith. This is number one. The faith of God that produces results in your life always starts with revelation. Bible faith, please hear me, always starts with revelation. You can never manifest true faith until there is a revelation. A revelation. The first piece of the equation of faith is revelation. And there are two dimensions to revelation. Please look up. The first is study. 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 And the second is meditation. You don't have revelation just by wishing. Study. It first starts by searching out. You cannot have faith in what you do not know. I love this baby. Come. Ah, she's afraid. She's going to run to her mother now. <laughs> May God bless. One, one of these days, our children will open the service for us. All of them will just hold the mic and blast in tongues for 10 minutes. Oh yes, many of them pray in tongues. At their age, you didn't even know whether... But, but God is doing a lot of work in our children. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's continue. Revelation. So it starts with diligently searching. Everybody say diligently searching. Now the problem with many believers, you cannot spend your life just reading newspapers, chase magazines, name them, all those kinds of rubbish and expect to have Bible faith. Even if there is a column where a man of God quickly shared something, faith doesn't come that way. Brothers and sisters, there is an investment you must make in studying the word. Look at me. This is your promised land. You must walk through it. Every time you read the Bible, it's like you are walking through your promised land to see what God has given you, to see what has been apportioned to you. So as I study this, I see, Halabakatayada. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall also do greater works than this. As I study, I begin to see. If ye be willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord, to do and observe all that I command thee this day. Right? That you will be exalted above all nations, and these blessings will come upon you and overtake you. Are you getting my point? When you are studying the Bible, imagine that you are walking around your land of promise. When you study the Bible, you are seeing the things that have been paid for. Are you getting my point? That cancer is killing you. And you take the Bible and you search. And you see where he hung on that cross and he said, it is finished. But that has not entered you. You are aware. Remember, you are getting revelation and this is only the first part. That's why I'm telling you what many people call faith is not faith. So I begin to walk around the promised land. Like he told Abraham, he said, from where thou art, lift up your eyes and look eastward, northward. That's what you do. When you begin to study, it's like you are walking through your land of promise. Brothers and sisters, you may be soaking Gary, just walk through the land. You are, you are no problem. There is no stove to boil the Indomie. Break it. As you are eating, walk Walk. You think I don't know how that thing works? <laughs> don't be fooled by what you see. There is a testimony of the transition of faith. See that? I was sharing with a lady that once upon a time, I used to buy bread and cut it and put granite. There's a way you arrange it so that with every bite, <laughs> you know, the whole surface area is covered. You push it in. You are not the first to do it. So all that insult, you've been insulting God. You said, look, there are people who did not even have the bread. Right? 
and God brought them out of it. So he will, he will bring you up. We just sang that our status is changing. But it starts as I walk through the land of promise. Everybody say the word of God is my land of promise. Say one more time, the word of God. I know tonight's teaching is very simple, but don't trivialize the power of it. The word of God is my land of promise. Ha! So I study, brothers and sisters. See, as I'm, I, I feel like just sitting down to start studying the Bible. As I'm just talking to you now. A weak person, a non-entity, nobody knows you. But when you walk through that land of promise, you are already engaging something. You may not understand. There's, I'm not denying the, look, I'm not denying the fact that you are in pain. Don't get me wrong. Faith does not deny what is happening. You see that? Aha. Uh -huh. So if I'm sick and I say, I have headache, it's not negative confession. No. Please. If you want to say you are well, say you are well. But if I'm sick and I tell you something is, is pinching me here, it's not lack of faith. Are you getting my point? Many of us have felt so guilty. We don't even know when you are serious, when you are saying the real thing or not. You say, bros, can we get 20 naira? I say, I'm rich. You say, no, no, no. The issue is, you know, if you don't want to say, okay, there's nothing exactly in the pocket. Please, don't feel embarrassed. Don't make it look like the word of God makes you a fool. Are you getting what I'm saying? You don't just speak anyhow and then things change. Speaking is a law. The Bible says a curse causeless shall not stand. Are you getting what I'm saying? So don't just say if I speak anyhow, whether I believe it or not, something happens. Be wise. That's why we are growing. Praise God. Study. So I walk through this thing. Look, let me tell you how I study. Let me show you how I study. I don't study foolishly. I study strategically. Everybody say strategically. My goal of studying the Bible is not to crime scriptures. There are real needs on ground. Criming does very little in helping you produce results. I hope you are aware. You can cram Genesis to Revelation. The part you truly act out in faith is the part that works for you. Is that true? So I write different aspects of my life that I want to see the glory of God revealed. I write ministry. I write my finances. Are you following me now? Different aspects. And I begin to walk through the garden of the Lord. My promised land. Finding out what God's idea what are his promises what is his what does his word have to tell me about this how far can I be anointed to what limit the problem is you see the reason why the devil kills your word study life right see when the devil wants to destroy you there are three things he just attacks it's very easy number one he kills your word life Number two, he kills your prayer life. Number three, he kills your corporate fellowship life. When these three are dead, you are finished. It's as simple as that. Just three things. You want to go and study and all of a sudden that lukewarmness. Notice, ladies, you've read novels that are two times larger than this. But to read just three or four pages that's to tell you there is a devil that does not want you to see something are you getting my point i can give you a storybook and you can read many of you have gone to the library you have gone to different things there are many people who in your place of work you are given tasks that require you reading voluminous books and you do all of that within a week but how come when it comes to studying this you thought it's because the letters are small. You brought you bought large letter edition. It's still is big. There is a there is a spirit. Hallelujah! Everybody says study. study. It starts there. Let me not deceive you, brothers and sisters. Faith is not cheap. If you understand this, you will respect everyone who walks by faith. True Bible faith starts the encounter of the word. When you study. You find the promises. When you find the promises, the next thing is meditation. Everybody say meditation. It's still part of getting to the point of revelation. I'm trying to break down how faith truly works. Say meditation. What is meditation? 
the word meditation as as it's not just to to speak aloud the word meditation is the process that makes a revelation become your own you see that okay now you are studying he told peter for instance cast your net to the right side how does that story relate to your situation in zaria meditation meditation begins to draw out the spirit of that word it begins to personalize it it's in the place of meditation that some of us even have encounters real encounters while you are meditating under a heavy unction you can sleep and then you have a dream in that dream you can have encounters some of you can see men of God some of you can see people and that thing crystallizes your conviction you get up and hold that scripture and say I caught this see that when when there is meditation the end of it is conviction the whole goal of revelation is to bring you to a point of conviction another word is persuasion I'm showing you how Bible faith starts. Persuasion. Persuasion. If you are not persuaded, you cannot finish the equation because you will doubt on the way. So you must strengthen your persuasion before the journey begins. Hallelujah. You don't believe in tithing. You just did it because your pastor laughed at you and said, look, you have not been paying tight. I'm, I'm watching those who are standing. I'm working in the same office with you. It's, it's me that pays your salary. Eh? And, and you get angry. And you get afraid. And so just to please your pastor, you just squeeze your envelope and frown and stand. And you lift it up. Let him see you. Oh, I'm dropping it now. You won't be blessed that way. That's mechanical. I never do things until I have the revelation for them. It's painful. To do a thing without having the revelation, you will be trying to copy others. And after wasting your time, you won't get their results. Don't be hasty in doing anything. Get a revelation. Hallelujah. Do you spend time meditating? Let me tell you, one of the greatest key to meditation is silence. Many of us are too noisy for the word of God to become alive in us. Is God speaking to us? There are times in the night, late in the night, I just carry a chair and I go outside and I just sit down. No noise. All the noisemakers are asleep. And I just sit down. And I'm just praying in tongues. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Sometimes I could just carry... Worship is not noise. You can have that faint atmosphere of worship and you're just sitting down all of a sudden a scripture like an arrow will fire into your spirit when you share it with somebody you'll be disappointed that they don't jump at it the way you jump because it's a revelation to you have you ever shared a scripture with somebody and said my goodness my brother you are slapping your head while you are talking say ah is it not last week's coin on your and you live there so sad and disappointed don't be disappointed they are life to those who find them to those who find them it has become your revelation now you are ready to move to the next level are we following now so the equation starts with what number one is revelation and on that revelation it takes study and meditation when a revelation has truly entered your spirit it will bring conviction listen i've said it again and again and let me repeat it revelation is not knowing what god has said that's study revelation is knowing what it takes to make it work in your life hmm. number two the second dimension the moment conviction and persuasion is there you believe it that's why many of us stop but that's not all there is let me shock you the next dimension to the equation of faith is prayer and i'll tell you why it's not just acting it's prayer listen to me i'm telling you what works prayer when you catch a revelation the next thing is not to run you will miss something major this is where a lot of people miss it are you getting it now when you catch a revelation brothers and sisters the next dimension is prayer an investment praying in tongues 
I beg you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, if you are not filled with the Holy Ghost with evidence of praying in tongues, real fluent spiritual tongues given by the Holy Ghost, contend for it. We are more than ready to minister to you here. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost has settled this issue of tongues or no tongues in the body of Christ. You are the only one who has not had the revelation. It's a done deal. It's a settled thing. The advantages of praying in the spirit is, is beyond any denominational barrier or whatever it is. What does prayer do to you? Two things. Prayer reveals the strategy. It's not enough to know what God wants to do. There is always what you must do to commit God. Prayer is where you get the strategy. Hear me. It is not every place in scripture where the condition is verbatim. There are some situations that are customized to you. Let me give you an instance. You now read how Jesus healed blind Bartimaeus, right? Or how God opened the womb of Anna. I'm a, okay, well, I'm not a woman. I wanted to use an example. Of, <laughs> praise the Lord. Now, but imagine that there is a woman who is buried, unable to take in. And now she begins to meditate, seeing the ministry of fruitfulness all in the Bible. All the scriptures that God has placed for fruitfulness. And all the barren women in the Bible who God opened their womb. She's studying. And in it, she begins to find spiritual keys. Are you getting my point? What they did. It does not mean you just, you can stand up. Your situation may not afford you the opportunity to do exactly what they did. For instance, some people left to Jericho. Where is your own Jericho? That you, are you getting me? It is in the place of prayer. The Holy Ghost gives you your customized strategy. Are you getting my point? Two things happen in prayer. We are, we are a praying ministry. See, you must be a man of prayer to appreciate what I'm saying. If you don't pray, it won't make sense to you. As you begin to pray, the strategy comes. You can't obey until the instruction comes. Are you getting my point? Strategy. So I begin to pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus, a crowd is packing full here. How are we going to get another venue? And I'm praying, humanly speaking, there may not be another venue. Lord, we thank you. What are you saying? And I begin to study the wilderness ministry of Jesus. How did they manage the crowds? What did they do? But we are not in the wilderness. So I need a rema. Are you getting my point? Prayer is what brings the spirit of the revelation. And then you will hear a word for you. Sometimes you can be praying. It is in the place of prayer that you get the customized revelation. And then two things happen. Number one, I told you, you get the strategy or the instruction. The second thing is you receive the grace supplied for obedience. You can never obey God until grace is given to you. Because some of the instructions that you will get from the place of prayer will be too hard. Some of the instructions may be empty your account. Some of the instructions may be pray all through the night. Is someone getting what I'm saying? Some of the instructions may be make sure you come and buy water here for three weeks. All kinds of instructions. That's why he not only gives you strategy, he releases the grace. Many people try to obey without the grace. This is the two-part dimension of grace that I want to explain to you. There is the dimension of grace that brings you into the finished work of Christ. And there is the dimension of grace supplied to you to obey, to actualize it. Right? It has been paid for, but you need grace to ensure its delivery. Someone's situation is changing. So you see that you prayed, you believed it. Oh, a job is coming. I found that revelation. Where Jesus, the, the master, told them, he said, why sittest thou idle? You see, you have to search. Lord, I'm jobless. Uncle, give me a job. You will, you will be frustrated forever. All those uncle and did things. Many of us have never paid attention to this other option. You just hear it. But why don't you go back to the word of God? Lord, I don't have a job. Holy Spirit, guide me. 
and all of a sudden the spirit of God who, who searches the mind of God begins to reveal to you and you find that parable for instance you find a parable where Jesus was sending people into the vineyard is that true and he met some people and said why sittest thou idle is that not a scripture now that relates to your situation through study there are Bible concordances there are Greek and Hebrew Bibles there is Bible gateway there are many Bible softwares that is your search huh? scriptures on joblessness Google enter and scriptures come out no 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 look don't laugh except you don't want a job and you bring them out some may make sense some may not make sense just scan them and you find you don't need plenty it may just be one and now you are getting that scripture watch this when you get that scripture you meditate lord open my eyes what made the master to call them was there anything on their part that they did is there something in between the line in this story that my eyes has not seen hallelujah and you get it so god is able you see the might the revelation of the might of god begins to down on you if god gave these people jobs and he paid them salary it means i can get a job and they will pay me salary and you begin to pray the moment you begin to pray don't just get up and act and say yes i've caught it application i hereby write for a job in this company you must give me what grace is sponsoring that 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 religiosity that's religion that's why you open the office and they'll say, what are you saying? You say, I want a job. They say, walk out of here. Do you think? And you, and you now live disappointed. You went with a lot of zeal. God is good. He has done me well. And, and now you are there and, and you are disappointed because you did not finish the equation of faith. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The next thing you would have done is to take that revelation to the place of prayer. The threshing floor where your customized unique instruction is given somebody's breakthrough is already happening to him because god is showing you the missing link it will work and then i begin to pray this is how i do with koinonia messages i play the messages and while the messages are playing because there are some things that I said by the Holy Ghost the man of God is preaching and Joshua Selman is listening to him and while he's preaching and praying and I just hear something once you hear it you are ready to act because the moment an instruction comes that instruction can still refer you back to the Bible right it doesn't just mean that you see an angel with wings you can hear it and then an instruction will come you can be praying and say lord change my situation as i go for koinonia change my situation and while you are praying lord i believe you will change my life tonight and while you are praying a scripture just come jesus told the lepers go and show yourself to the priest you see that that's a revelation that would have not made sense in a normal day. But to you, it is God's remnant to you. And the Bible says, as they went. What, what does that mean? It means you should stand up and go. See that? And as you go, you commit the integrity of God to perform. So prayer reveals the strategy and it also supplies grace. Because there are some instructions especially financial instructions some of you you have not you are not givers that's why it, it, it you don't get there are some people here who are reckless givers if you are a true giver you know that you need grace it's called giving grace because you are crying and say lord change my situation lord i need this ten thousand something must happen i don't have an uncle i don't have an auntie my father is dead my mother is dead I don't have anybody. I didn't have the opportunity to go to school. You are the only one I have. And Lord, if you do not help me, I have seen in the word of God that these are the situations and God says, take now thy Isaac, that son. Are you a fool? You are about to go and use that money and at least even buy a Bible with it. And God says, I know it's a Bible you want to buy. Forward match. Sometimes God can tell you to go and sow it into the life of somebody you don't love. You can't pretend you didn't hear it. See that? But in that instruction, you are now ready to obey. That's the last final phase of the equation of faith.
prompt and complete obedience. Please write. Number one is revelation. Number two is prayer. Number three is prompt and complete obedience. Having all readiness to judge every disobedience when your obedience is complete. Prompt and complete obedience. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19. Please let's hurry up. Let me tell you something brothers and sisters. This is the hardest part of the equation of faith. Settling down to study is not the hard part. This is the labor dimension of faith. Are you getting me? This is where you labor in the spirit. It says, if ye be what? And not willing and desirous. Not willing and hungry. If ye be willing, revelation makes you willing. But obedience, the hardest part, this is the link, brothers and sisters, this is the consummation of the faith equation. No matter what else you do that you call faith, if you do not obey, it is not called faith. Hallelujah. Confession, sowing of seeds, only become potent when we are willing to obey. When we are willing to obey. Everybody say obedience. I have found out that this is the link between where you are and where you need to go. Brothers and sisters, obedience is not child's play. Obedience is hard work. That's why you must receive the grace in the place of prayer. Lord, I know you are about to speak and I cannot pretend that I'm not hearing you. So grant me the grace. That when the instructions come, may they not be too heavy. Yes. 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 That's all I'll say to him. Yes. your link to the next level yes. when you hear that instruction yes. it means your season is about to change a guarantee listen your obedience is what judges the devil obedience obedience oh I feel the anointing of the spirit I'll hurry up so that we will pray brothers and sisters obedience obedience we are going to look at one case study and then we'll support you if you Isaiah 51 please quickly one and two let's hurry up Isaiah 51 Let's look at a man who from the Bible is called the epitome of faith. Isaiah 51. Hallelujah, verse 2. Everyone read. It says, look unto Abraham, your father, and to Sarah that bear you. For I called him alone and blessed him and I increased him. That means God is giving you a case study. He's saying now that you know what faith is, look at a biblical portrait on that study his life and you will find therein the keys. So let's study Abraham. Genesis 22, quickly please. Our first case study is Abraham. How did God turn an idol worshiper, a mediocre in a small land called the awe of the Chaldeans? How did he become so prosperous? How did he become the father of faith? Hallelujah. Verse 2. It says, and he said, watch this. 
Okay, let's go to 12, verse 1 and 2, then we'll come back to 22. Genesis 12 from verse 1 and 2. The Bible, do you know that the person who was supposed to carry this, this fatherly mantle was his father, Terah? It was not Abraham. Terah missed it through disobedience. And the Bible says, Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of what? Are you seeing now? So we see that an instruction came. What was the instruction? Get out. Don't ask questions. Just move. He says, get thee out of thy country from thy kindred father's house unto a land that I will show you. He said, if you do this, here's the result. I will make of thee. Many times we caught the part of the scripture and just start claiming, I will. no, there was an instruction. Faith is a response to an instruction. And I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. Next verse. Verse 3 now. Help us media. In Jesus name. Please walk together. We have to really rush. Okay, no problem. And then he finished all the blessings. I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that cursed thee and in thee shall the families of the earth be blessed. When will that happen? When will that happen? What was the first instruction? Get out. Abraham would have remained there and he would have died an idol worshiper at the all, at all of the Chaldeans. He got up and began to move. Go to verse 13. Chapter 13, sorry. Chapter 13, not. Chapter 13 from verse 1. And Abraham went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and Lot went with him into the south. Abraham took a step and he started moving. Lord said, I'm going with you. For joining in the obedience alone, the man became blessed. Are you getting me now? Lot was not part of the covenant. Like Ruth held on to who? Naomi. She was not supposed to be part of the lineage. She said, no way. I'm not going anywhere. Oh, prophet, thank you. I'm, I'm leaving. Ruth said, no way. Your obedience is my... Whatever you do, I will do. 22 verse 1. Here was a test. The instruction was going to come for that promise to become real. At this point, Abraham had begun to experience some some kinds of things liftings and all of that and it came to pass after these things that god did tempt the word tempt there is test abraham and said unto him abraham and he said behold here i am verse two and he said what take your son we are understanding abraham abraham did not just carry isaac he would have slaughtered his son for nothing with no blessing attached you move as instructed not as you wish Either instructed by the voice of the spirit or the principles of the word. is still the same. We have been taking steps out of our wishes and not out of the voice of God. It says, Isaac, whom thou lovest and get thee into the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I'll show you. Verse 3, may that be your testimony. Read the first line. And Abraham rose up early in the morning. Everybody say prompt obedience. Delayed disobedience. Delayed obedience is disobedience in a measure. When God speaks to you, stand up. The moment you sit down there, that grace gets exhausted. And you find out you no longer can stand up. God told you to sow the seed. At that point, because it was in the place of prayer, you could do it. He said, wait, later on. When you came, you now calculated how much? 120. Hi! What did I hear like this? In the morning, you even said it's even 200 I will give. But something has happened. See that? Or go and lay your hands on the woman in Shika. And you say, in the name of Jesus, I'm going. I know that they are used to seeing me just as a brother. But I'm going as instructed. And later on, you just say, let me quickly just go and greet uh, Benga and see whether he has prepared lunch after the lunch and everything you get up and your mind starts telling you yourself they have already called you stupid even before you behave stupid 
Now, by the time you go to the hospital, what if they drive you? What if something happens to the car? I say, oh Lord, I'll just intercede. After all, it's, it will soon be time for prayers. You see, when, the, the beauty of grace is you take advantage of it immediately. The grace for obedience must be maximized promptly. He rose up early. There is a reason why the Bible tells us that. Remember, we're understudying Abraham. He rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and so on and so on and so forth. Uh, let's go to verse 5. Verse 5. Okay, verse 7. He said, and Isaac spoke unto Abraham his father and said, my father, and he said, here I am. He said, behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb? The son didn't know he was the lamb. Next verse, please. Let's hurry up. And Abraham said, my God shall provide a lamb for his bond offering. So they went up together. Verse 9. And they came to a place which God had done this and that and that. And he bound Isaac. Verse 10. And Abraham stretched forth. Makalabo kataya. His obedience was about to be complete. Do you know if he did not leave that knife, everything he has done is multiplied by zero. It's painful when you start your obedience and stop. You've paid too much price. Why don't you finish it and, and commit God's integrity? Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Verse 11. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, and he said, here I am. He said, lay not thy hand on the lad, neither do thou anything to him. He said, for now. See that? For when? Not when you left your house. Not when you were at the base of the mountain. For now. I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son. In other words, you obeyed me even unto death. The blessing follows. 13. And Abraham lifted his eyes and looked and beheld a ram caught by the thorns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it at a burnt offering instead of his son. 14. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. Are you seeing that now? Jehovah Jireh, you are singing it. Jehovah Jireh. Uh -uh. Don't just sing. What did he do that made that a revelation? My God shall supply all my needs. True. According to his riches in glory. But according to your obedience to the instructions that will bring that riches. 15. And the angel of the Lord called out of Abraham called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said by myself come on now this is God stepping in when your equation is complete Satan was not mentioned here it was a deal between God and he said by myself I have sworn because thou hast done done not said not confess oh I will kill Isaac in the name of Jesus Isaac you are dead in fact it's not that you are dying you are dead it's nonsense if there is no obedience he said, and has not withheld thy son, 17. He said that in blessing, I will bless you. And in multiplying, I will multiply you. As, the, as, as thy seed, as the stars of heaven, and as the sun which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall what? Possess the gates of thy enemy. Please, I want you to make up your mind beginning from today. That obedience will become the watchword of your life. This is Bible faith. Obedience. In Joshua chapter 6, just write it. I will not need to go there. The walls of Jericho. I want to show you. In fact, when you go to Hebrews 11, the Bible begins to give us the archives of men who did exploit with what we know called faith. And you find out that for all of them, there may be variations here and there. But one common thing is that they all took steps when a word came. They took steps. Jericho. In Joshua chapter 1, the Lord began to speak to Joshua. He said, as I was with my servant Moses, so I will be with you. Right? He said, only don't be afraid, be courageous, and so on and so forth. And, and you know, he looked at all of them. Now, watch this. God had told him he had given him Jericho. But if they just went, do you know they would have killed them? Please learn this. Never obey. Just try to obey without prayer. Involve God. You will get the unique instructions. That's where the power lies in the word. 
in the instruction. Hallelujah. When Joshua went to pray in the night, what happened? The strategy was revealed to him. So on one side, you will take Jericho, but there is a strategy. It's a strategy that was never used in the Bible for anything again. It came as a rema. And he told him, he said, walk around. That's the strategy. You walk around today and it may not walk until it is a rema. But he walked around seven times, right? And on the seventh day, he went seven times and he said, now, Tehila, let there be a shout. That was a strategy. Other times, he told Jehoshaphat, he said, put the worshippers in front and let them begin to sing and say, you are good and your mercies endure forever. That's the strategy. For you, your strategy may be come for counseling. God can tell you there is an anointing you will receive and it will change your life. Write your name for counseling. Even if there is nothing, just come. That's a strategy. For someone else, the Lord will say, go on a three-day fast. In the three-day fast, I will speak to you and you will catch a light. Are you getting what I'm saying? So you see that many of the things we call faith is not faith. It's not faith. It's just metaphysics. The widow in Zarephath, 1 Kings 17 from verse 7 to 16. Just write it, will not turn there for time's sake. Remember what happened. God commanded Elijah to go to Zarephath. There he will meet a widow. And watch this. He came and he met a woman in a state of lack and insufficiency. She needed to put her faith to work. But she could not put her faith to work until a word would come. And the prophet said, bring me water. The woman would have said, water for what? Water for what? And she took the water and as she was bringing it, he said, also bring me a morsel of bread. And she said, honestly, sir, this instruction is so much. He said, just do this. And the Bible says when she obeyed, her faith was released and she saw the supply. Are you seeing in scripture that all through the hallmark of faith is obedience? In my opinion, there is one word for faith, obedience. That's it. One word, obedience. If you do not obey the word, forget about the manifestation. When we're about to start Koinonia, I went to the Lord because the Lord had shown me in a vision. But where I saw in a vision, I could not relate with any physical place. And then I was, my mind had a lot of options here and there. But I went to the Lord. I said, Lord, I know that you are able to do this. All I need is a strategy. And I was praying, praying in the spirit. Just lying down and worshiping. And all of a sudden, I had CGC. The Lord spoke to me. And I said, Lord, I don't even know the people here. How are we going to get access to the place? And the Lord told me, I've gone before you. You see, you don't need to do anything. Just stay there. The word has come. And see where we are today. The product of faith. It will work any day. It will work any time. One time I was praying and I said, Lord, how do we do now? There are sick people and your people need to be equipped. And the Lord said, turn the last Friday of every month to become a special time to minister to the people. When the counseling was getting too much, every day I said, Lord, what is, what is this strategy? And first we had moved to Saturday. And then the Lord helped us to arrive. Who does counseling on Monday by 11 o'clock? Does that make sense to you? But that's what God said. Look, brothers and sisters, if he speaks, start moving. Let your mind understand later on. Are you getting what I'm saying? Look at Jesus. I love Jesus. Jesus looks at a man who is blind. Sir, I am blind. And then Jesus makes mud, right? Puts in his eyes and says, go and wash. Go and wash. Go and wash. I'm blind. If I could see, would I come to you? They let me. He didn't say, neighbors, take him to go and wash. He said, find your way there. Same thing Elisha told Naaman. Go and bath. See? You can choose to be arrogant about it or you can humble yourself and enter that water seven times and change your story. Naaman said, but there no rivers. The, the, the servant said, I'm walking with you. Soon I will leave you all. Please, you better be healed so that this thing will be better for us. You are a liability to me, this and that and that. Go and bath. And he went, watch this. He went and started obeying. 
but nothing happened till his obedience was complete. Six times he would have gotten up and just gone with mud like a fool. A man who brought victory. Right? He would have just moved and said, Ah, Captain, where are you from? He said, well, One stupid prophet gave me an instruction. After six times, I said, Come on, my pride will not allow me. Many of you started obeying. One step to see the hand of God, the devil brought you back. And look, nothing happened. One step. Some of you came from miracle service, for instance. And we said, in the name of Jesus, you shout that name, Jesus. And you just stood and said, I beg there is. People were just shouting like fools. And you were there and said, ah, everybody was getting blessed, getting healed. Instructions. Instructions. The secret of true faith. When you get that word, obey. The truth is we have not been obedient enough. And this is why we've not been seeing it. Look at the feeding of the 5,000. Jesus took the bread, blessed it, and did what? The bread did not multiply in the hands of Jesus. Did it? No, sir. He gave them. He said, go and start sharing. Go and start sharing. Look at the 10 lepers. He told them, he said, go and show yourself to the priest. And they went at that word. The Bible said, as they went. Not before, as they went. He says, this sign shall follow, not go before. You have to take steps. A miracle always comes or the miracle always comes after the instruction or condition is met. Never forget this. The miracle always comes after the instruction has been obeyed. Fully. Yes to your will, Lord. Yes to your ways. Oh, oh yes, Lord. I will obey. Yes to your will, Lord. Yes to your ways. Therefore, is defined as the action you take. Right, we are concluding. Faith is defined as the action you take based on your conviction of God's word and in line with the instructions required by God. Right. Faith is the action you take not the desire to act the very action you take based on your conviction of god's word and in line with the conditions or instructions required by god if you do that you have manifested what the bible calls bible faith otherwise you will just be playing games and talking games I told the Lord, whatever you demand of me, I will do. I was in Abuja and um, one of my very nice shoes that I love, I was polishing the thing to package it and the Lord told me, this shoe goes for so, so, so person. Someone sowed a very major seed into my life and as soon as I received it, God said, now you are an usher, pass it to so, so, so person. Years ago, I would have cried, but I've grown. Mm. Because every time his instruction comes, that's my status changing. That's it changing. Hallelujah. Last year, when we were starting Koinonia, the Lord said we should carry all the seed in the house and sow everything. Everything. The whole money. I told the finance department, I said the Lord has given an instruction, pack everything. If God has told you you will marry a man of God, start praying for grace. Don't just say when. Pray for grace. Because you are, the man himself is, is enough to be a ministry for you. A true man of God is strange. Right? You wake up and see a man roaming like a zombie in your room. Speak, Lord, I'm listening. Honey, what's going on? I'm okay, it's alright. And you are wondering whether you are the one who is going as a sacrifice or not. Listen, 
you will never receive breakthrough beyond the level of your last obedience never 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 don't reject the instructions of god every time you search the bible look for conditions not just promises alone what are the conditions tied to them hallelujah i sowed that seed and in less than two hours more than one thousand percent of that seed came into my life Hallelujah. Crazy instructions that God has given me. Crazy instructions. I remember when I traveled to Canaan land as the instruction of the Lord. I went with a seed and I went there when I was done outside in the public, not in one small corner. The Lord told me, go on your knees on that ground. And I went down there. I've shared the story. You know about it. I've shared with you how the Lord instructed me to give everything. Everything. Hallelujah. I carried my Isaac, dragged it into the church, and came and placed it on the altar like a fool. Don't want any man's glory until you can obey the instructions he obeyed. What you need to pray for is Lord grace. There was a time the Lord instructed me. I locked myself for three days non-stop. My eyes did not see the sun. Did not see the sun. Because the Lord said so. No sun, no food, no nothing. The only thing that I did was to take my bath. And that was because the bathroom was inside the room where I stayed. No nothing. Are you willing to obey? If ye be willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. Hallelujah. I told you about how I trekked from the roundabout in PZ. Right? At the instruction of the Lord, the roundabout in PZ, I trekked to aviation, praying in tongues. I take this city. The keys of this city is given unto me. Don't you sit down and see people coming and think it's just because I'm a young man. It's not charm. When you obey him, his integrity is committed. Who is God speaking to tonight? Stop grumbling and complaining. Cry and say, Lord, what is the word for the next level? Because if he gives you that word, you will rise to that. Hallelujah. I remember someone who one time, his father was sick. And he played an instrument for from night the lord gave him an instruction to play an instrument from about 10 till about 6 in the morning he said just play that instrument non-stop and that guy was worshiping by the morning the father was healed look at me the arm of the lord is not too short koinonia are you hearing me there are pastors there are people we like miracles but we hate instructions we hate instructions my life moves at the pace of the instructions of the Lord. Instructions of the Lord. I think it was yesterday or day before yesterday, I saw one suit that I like. New suit, they just sold it to me. And the Lord showed me the face of someone in protocol. Ah! I said, oh God, this is going. I called him immediately. I said, where are you? I said, come quickly. This is for you. And he came and I gave him. He was surprised. I said, bye bye. Before any unbelief will enter and I'll collect my team back. Go. I love you, Jesus. That was from the Spirit. I worship and adore you. I just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. Oh, it takes faith to move mountains, brothers and sisters. I love you, Jesus. There is no instruction I will not obey. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. Listen. It says through faith, they subdued kingdoms. They wrought righteousness. They shut the mouths of lions. He said, what more can I say? For time will fail me to speak to you about Gideon and Barak and Jephthah. Ordinary men who obey God to the latter. 
Sister, when you obey God, that man must come. It doesn't matter where he is. Forget about witches and wizards. Concentrate on your obedience. Concentrate. There are some of you, God told you, drag your family members and bring them here. The word came with the grace for it to happen. You said, Master, we have toiled all night. There are times God can use a man to speak to you. They tell you, go and listen to relationship and family life. I have listened to it before. No, no. Remember, you are responding to a word. Don't forget. He may tell you to do what you have always done. But this time around, there is an anointing upon it. You will do it and see very seemingly crazy instructions. God can tell you, just sit down on these drums. And just be playing and clashing the cymbal and praying in tongues. Do it. Do it. If you are ashamed of men, forget about greatness. You will never carry certain levels of the anointing. I went for six hours in Joss, standing at the Renhard Bonke Kuse because I was desperate. And, and I set my gaze on that man because there was something I wanted to land on me. I was not sitting down asking stupid questions that people ask when they go to places. Ah, this man, this white man, why is he wasting our time? Is there Rema or no Rema? That was not my, I was at my, my, my face was set like a flint. Brothers and sisters, listen. Wait, the financial prosperity series I'm about to preach, I truly believe it will cause a revolution. There are new things that the Lord has shown me that I put my hand on my head. I say, my goodness, Joshua Selman, where have you been? Your life must change. We're in the season of the rain. Obedience is the platform. Don't blame anybody. Take responsibility. There are only three prayer points tonight we are going to pray. Rise up on your feet. Let's pray. Sorry about the time. We are really working on beating the time. But I want you to pray. Begin to thank God for the word tonight. Begin to thank him for the word tonight. It's time for new levels of grace. New fountains. New levels of impact. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like you to pray. Prayer point number one. Lord, help me and give me a receptive spirit to hear your instructions and to see your conditions as demanded by scripture. Lift your voice. Please pray seriously. This is the time to pray and not walk around inside and outside. Let our spirits be opened, O oh God. That as we study, may we see instructions. May we not just see promises, but conditions. Your level is changing, I tell you. Your level is changing, I tell you. God is not a man that you should lie. He's not the son of man that you should repent. Lord, I receive a receptive spirit. I receive a receptive spirit. I receive a receptive spirit. I'm receptive to your instruction. Hallelujah. Listen, there are conditions tied to you walking in divine health. There are conditions tied to influence and increase and honor. There are conditions tied to prosperity. There are conditions tied to longevity. Find out. We have preached these things. Our messages are full of these keys. Prayer point number two. 
Lord Jesus, speak to me. Speak to me. I'm ready to obey. Speak to me. Let your word supply grace. Reveal the strategy. Pray. Show me the key to the next level of breakthrough, to the next level of influence, to the next level of encounter, to the next level of the anointing. Through vision, through the written word, through prophetic direction, instructions will come in messages as you walk. Hallelujah. 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 Prayer point number three. I want you to pray this with all your heart. Cry for a fresh supply of grace for prompt and complete obedience. Some of you, God has given you instructions. There are seeds to sow. There are places to go. There are tapes to listen to. There are encounters. There are retreats to have. You have not obeyed, so you will never see his glory. Lift your voice and cry. I receive grace. I receive grace. I receive grace. I receive grace. I receive Hallelujah. Watch this. It is after you obey that you can now begin to confess. And then you can now sow a seed and tie a seed to it. Except if the sowing of the seed is the instruction. Or that if I'm believing God say for a house and I find out God gives me an instruction. Go and get an architectural design and see the kind of house you want. That's an instruction. Don't sit down and start giving foolish arguments. Now I go and I say, Lord, I found what I want here. God will say, go and estimate. How much will it cost? Now you, co you estimate and you say it will cost 15 million. <laughs> you are sitting down. All you have home and abroad is 500 naira. Forget about it. And Look, the blessing is in the instruction. It's not in what you have. Whether, you, you, whether it is 1,000 or 1 billion, it is still faith that will bring it. Hallelujah. And now you begin to pray. And while you pray, God will say, relax. He said, don't worry. Just relax. It will come as a seed. You have heard the word. You stand still. And you begin to prophesy. Or God will say, now go and sow a seed for it. Or you want to get married, for instance. And, and, and you are praying and you are thanking God. You are saying, Lord, thank you for this. And then you find out God gives you an instruction in the place of prayer. Maybe go and wash the plate. Go to one woman who is already married. He may even be your friend. He said, just go on a Saturday and help them sweep and wash their plate. That's the instruction. If you are too ashamed to do it, forget about marriage. It may be crazy, but go and do it. After you have done that, then you can now begin to prophesy. And you can now connect with a seed. 
and say, Lord, I sow a seed into this and I speak. My marriage is coming. The man that God is bringing, like our sister said, is a blessed man. He's a godly man. Your obedience is complete. Something is wrong with your family. Your husband or your wife is misbehaving and all of that. You don't sit down and say, me and you will enter the same trouser. What has entering the same trouser got to do with, with the solution? You don't need to enter the same trouser. You need a word from God. All these stupid cultural things that we put, we must enter the same trouser. And do what? Is it going to solve the problem? Get a word from God. Where you are confused, come for counsel. This is the situation. What do you think? What is, the, what is the scriptural mystery? What is the principle that is responsible for the delivery of this? Right? That's why we pray. That's why we come here all the time. We are dispensing mysteries. As these mysteries are dispensed, it's falling on different people. You catch it and you walk with it. It has changed the lives of people from nothing. It has taken people to wherever they will go. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Very fearful and touching testimony. A gentleman listened to my message. He's been following my teachings and he's been listening to my messages. And they are trusting God. He's a real estate person. He's trusting God for breakthroughs and all of that. And then a miracle just happened to him. Within a short time, they gave him 60 hectares of land to develop and sell. His profit from that is 300 million. He's a young man like me. The word. As if that will finish, when I, when I got to Abuja, he made sure, every time I go to Abuja, he makes sure he's the one driving me around. He said, I must drive you. The last time I went, he said they gave him another 40 hectares, making 100 hectares. What is it that God cannot do? Your obedience. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Your obedience. Your obedience. Your obedience. I hear a lot of testimonies. Testimonies. You were, I think many of us have, have we've heard about the testimony of the woman who for eight years was barren. Selena's auntie or so. And this woman supernaturally, by acting the word of God, had triplets. They are all alive today. Triplets to recover for the eight years. What is it that God cannot? Don't come, we say right prayer requests. It's when you are here that you just scrabble in what is even your own. You are just playing games with God. That's why very few people get testimonies. Change your attitude from today. Let it not be Friday by five. You say it's time for koinonia. Be intentional about it. There are people who come in for miracle service. We all fast on Thursdays. But on Friday, they, they prepare when I'm coming for koinonia, it's as if, do you know, you see me sit down sometimes here. My body is shaking. I'm just waiting for worship to finish. Testimonies, when people are shouting, you see, there's answer. I want to just dispense what God has brought. But there are people who just sit down. You bring a teaspoon and you want, you want to have an ocean of blessings. Enlarge your capacity. There is an anointing, a portion. There is a grace designated let me tell you happy are you the day you come into the environment where the anointing that was sent for you do you know let me tell you this and i tell you this honestly my heart is passionate when it has to do with blessing people but i have met people in my life that i just prayed for them just for praying sake but i knew in my spirit i wasn't sent to them of course, you won't tell them so they don't feel bad. But you know. But I've seen others. I could even wait for them to share their challenges because I know. I know. The anointing sent to you. So believe his prophets. Are we together? There were many widows in Zarephath. Elijah was looking for just one. Have a prophet. What of other women? <clears throat> I love them. I can pray. I can intercede. May God bless you. Do A, B, and C. But I'm looking for a woman of Zarephath. Where is she? Finally, you find her. And his clear she's not even ready for you. She's doing something else. The prophet would have been angry to say, I spent time to come here. You don't even know what you are missing. I'm on my way going. But because he was sent, he had to stay. His assignment was to change her life. 
when you find the anointing and the prophet that God has sent over your life and your situation, let me tell you, you will watch that anointing rubbish your situation in the, as if Satan does not exist. It's, it's not just, this is where we have a little challenge with many believers who just say, the most important thing is God. Yes, you are right, but you are wrong. The most anointing is anointing. What is there? What is so special about this man of God? This is what I'm teaching you now. People are sent to people. Even the word of God is sent. He sent his word like a messenger. Meaning until that word is sent, you can stay there. But when the word comes like a messenger, angel Gabriel left other people believers around earth and was directed to one person daniel all that fight for 21 days in the heavenlies he would have been angry to say i'm going to someone else mm -mm. he said daniel i am come to give you understanding are you the only one i am come to give you understanding jesus is appearing by the road saul is on his way to damascus Brothers and sisters, the Bible says there were other people with Saul. God would have been fair enough to at least give them something. And then he isolates one person and discusses with the person. The rest just fall down and don't even know what threw them down. They just got up to clean themselves and say, Kai, now wow, what is all this one now? Whereas one person has that encounter. Sent. 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 The word that changes my life, sent. I have had encounters with sent words and sent prophets. And my God, did my life change. Tonight, let me tell you, if you can believe, this, he said, believe his prophets. I know you are a businessman. I know you are educated. I know you are smart. But there are many equations in this life that cannot be solved with pen and paper. They are solved from the realm of the spirit. It's only the result you receive here. Are we together now? Believe in his prophets, so shall you prosper. Write this down, please. His prophet here is the vessel sent from him to you. You must first acknowledge that this vessel is sent from God to you. And one of the ways that you can help yourself to believe the prophet God has sent to you is investigate the dealings of God with that man. Don't just believe for nothing. You have a right to investigate the dealings of God with that man. What is so special about this man? Why should I believe him? Why should I take the word that he's bringing seriously? Every true prophet of God has a track record of his dealings with God. Investigate the dealings of God. Study the track records of his results. I think it's unfair if you just yoke people to believe you just like that. No. Give them room to study the track records of your results and find out whether the results are worth your believing. How do you believe his prophets? Open up your spirit to receive both his grace and his instructions. Don't just receive the grace alone. Instructions. Many times believers miss it because we miss instructions very subtle instructions sometimes very ego stinging instructions like you were seated here now and then i just said everybody shout jesus you know i don't mean to embarrass your intelligence you don't sit on a seat and shout jesus you've been singing a song before you came here you there was jesus more than 10 times in that song you kept shouting jesus jesus lover of my soul and nothing happened and here you are sitting and a man is saying just shout jesus once if you don't have this revelation, you can sit down and say, please, what is, we are not children here. What is all this nonsense? He told Naaman, go to Jordan, wash seven times. Naaman said, me? Jordan, there are clean rivers somewhere. 
and a small girl said, you are the one in trouble. If you don't go and wash, you can go back with your lepros. Two scriptures, and then we'll pray. Exodus chapter 14 and verse 31. And Israel saw the great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians. It says, and the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and also what? His servant Moses. God performs mighty things and creates that track record, not just so that he alone will be believed. God also wants the vessel he's using to be believed. The Bible says they feared the Lord. They believed the Lord and they believed his servant. They believed the Lord and they believed his servant. You believe the Lord, you don't believe his servant, you may not get any miracle. Exodus chapter 19 and verse 9. Exodus chapter 19 and verse 9. And the Lord said unto Moses, look up please. Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with thee, and believe thee forever. That means, I can talk to you without the cloud, but I keep that cloud as that evidence so that the people can trust that it is me you are talking to. I'm, I'm going that far because I don't just want the people to believe me alone. I want them to believe you too because their receiving is dependent on their, both their believing me, God, and their believing you, his servant. He says, and the Lord said, I come in a thick so sometimes when God does some of these signs and wonders, it's, it's not really just for him alone. When God does some of these things, oh, there's a lady here and someone is shouting. Another, you know what God is doing? He's using those things. It's, it's a similitude of the cloud to help you see. You can call somebody and say, who is grace or who is um, victory? And you can say, this is just guessing. I'm sure it's just guessing. But how do you guess that someone in this direction do you guess that one? God does some of these things sometimes purposely to just address the, the leftover of unbelief. Because you see, some of us are coming from different Christian experiences. Some of us have been, our minds have been messed up by all kinds of theology, all kinds of philosophies. Some of us have had bad experiences with all kinds of men of God, prophets, and whatever. And chances are that when you come like this, usually you will just add the man of God to the list of all the people and hope that he's just a better version of them. And God says, not so. And he uses these signs to speak to you that you are in Mount Zion. Are we together? It's amazing how a little miracle can just readjust your unbelief immediately. Readjust your unbelief while the devil is trying to lie to you. Can your life be changed all of a sudden? The, the power will touch the person near you. This is somebody you shook hands with. Turn to your neighbor and say this and that. So you know that the person, uh, the person can be acting. It's a very difficult thing for believers to believe God. But I think it's even harder to believe a man of God. And people have all kinds of justifications as to why they shouldn't believe men of God. But regardless of what your justifications are, if you believe God and don't believe the vessel, you will be established but you will not prosper. Are we together? Your prosperity is what gives evidence to your establishment. You must believe one word from God can turn your life around one prophetic word can turn your life around all these strange spirits that oppress people they don't just go because they are told to go no it takes the anointing I was talking with one of the protocol uh, people when we were coming down here and I told him I was shaking my head and then I was talking to him and I said I am amazed driving down to come for the miracle service now. 
I said, I am amazed at how people in Africa and Nigeria trivialize success. I am shocked at how people um, believe that success is about luck. It's amazing how people can see a huge sacrifice and trivialize it and just make it look like, I think these people are just fortunate. Is that true? I, I, these were my contemplations while I was coming. Listen, there's no result that happens in this kingdom by mistake. No. Including the testimony you are about to have. That gentleman from Ghana, he did not just press this thing and found my name. No, 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 no. The anointing that is sent with that word works day or night. Are we together now? There are many testimonies just like his, that gentleman. You see that now? Someone will tell you I was sitting and I had a dream. How about those who buy new phones, brand new phones, brand new phones, and then they open it and see koinonia messages inside? How do you explain that? A new phone. Not new, uh, what do they call that thing? Not new memory card. I'm not talking about new memory card. A new phone that you bought it, tear rubber. You are the one who opened it. Then the first thing you see inside is a message that answers your question. Who, who now, who, how do you explain that? Listen, listen. We live in a world that is not natural. It only manifests the spiritual naturally. The, 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 the earlier you got this, the better. My brothers and my sisters, hear me. All that you see in this world is only a reflection. Say reflection. The real control room in this our world is the realm of the spirit. Whoever can ascend this three-dimensional realm has the advantage of victory. Nothing happens that is physical. Are we together? One of the reasons why many of us are seated here tonight, among the many miracles we desire is finance. Oh, Nigerians, finance. You want to talk a good news to any honest Nigerian right now? In this day and age, as we transit into the ember month, no matter, speak about their spiritual life, yes. Speak about their love for God, passion, new depth, but please don't ignore that other one. Just even if it's in passing, just say something about it. Finance. Many people want to see financial breakthrough. Many people are working and they are trusting God for breakthrough. And remember, the strange thing about finance, do you know why, listen, I'm not talking about money, we're going to pray shortly. Do you know why many believers are poor? Because in the kingdom, finance is warfare. Money is not just an instrument to live well, it's a weapon. See, listen. Oh dear, what's it? Ecclesiastes 7. Let me just talk a little. You was, uh, I, I didn't plan to say this, but Ecclesiastes 7, verse 12. Let me show you something. May God give somebody deliverance right now. Read it, read it. One to read. For wisdom is a defense. Uh huh. And money is a defense. Just stop there. So we know from the word that both wisdom and money is a defense. Now look up. When the Bible says you have a weapon, what is a weapon? Something you use to both defend yourself and you can use also for attack. Is that true? If you give me a weapon, like a shield, I use it for defense. And the Bible says one of the many weapons, money is one of them. And the Bible says those weapons are not carnal. The word not carnal means they are not man-made. But my brother, my sister, this thing is man-made. It was made by CBN. That means this is not what God is talking about. Because this is man-made. But the Bible says this weapon that he calls money is not carnal. He says it is mighty through God. That means there is a spirit. Are you getting what I'm saying? That means this thing is only the body. The same way a human being is called currency. Anything that moves is a living thing. And that means there is a spirit inside the body to move it. 
you are only seeing the body where is the spirit that moves it that's why it can enter a house you didn't ask it to go and it will go out by itself it can enter your account and still go out because it's warfare the bible says believe is prophet there is something they can do that can do something to the many things including this This is what we chase all around because we think this is paper. No. This is not, this is paper, yes. But there is a spirit behind it. And this thing respects that spirit. This is what you need to understand. So the spirit can instruct it to leave you. And it can leave. No matter how hardworking you are, you can receive salary. And all you have is part of this left and it can be instructed to leave you. It will, you know it's going. It's going out of your life. It just touches your hand and disappears. Because the weapons, prosperity is warfare. It's not just about money to buy car and houses. Money is a defense. It can defend the gospel. It can defend a man. And the Bible says all those weapons, they are not carnal. So if you ever see this looking for anybody, Naira does not look for men. Something makes it come. I, please, are you getting what I'm saying? If you can understand this alone, at least even if you don't know how it comes, you already know that it doesn't come by itself. These are the mysteries that surround our kingdom. You ever see anybody prosperous in the kingdom? My brothers and my sisters, listen to me. This is a spiritual realm. You don't have to be a Christian to believe it. You just have to be alive. This is a spiritual realm. Animals know it. Plants know it's a spiritual realm. That's why you throw a seed in the ground and you cover it. You don't leave it open. You cover it. Because what happens there is none of your business. Now you just cover it and watch it happen. And it grows to become a tree that you cannot push down. A little seed. When you planted it, it had no roots. The Bible says, just like you do not know the way of the wind, nor how a woman, how a child is formed in the womb of her that is with child, you know, and all of that, so also you don't know the way of God. The Lord brought you here tonight because there are spiritual possibilities, listen, that are beyond the realm of the eye. Are we together? Most times we believe only what we can see and understand and explain. Unfortunately, in this kingdom, there are things that you may not be able to explain. When people come here to testify, you see me sit quietly and I watch. And many times I'm in shock as I watch the immutability of God's power in the lives of people. The same way you are going to come up here to testify. Yes, it's true. What suddenly happens to you and then you have someone just call you and say, we are sending you to US to get a job. Hapa, my brothers and my sisters, I've told you again and again that everybody who helps you has relatives too who I need. Whatever makes you to leave them and come to you is not normal. That you are sitting and someone says I'm thinking of you who do you think you are no I want to help you I want to bless you you step into prepared blessings blessings that you are as sure he said master we have toiled all night and Jesus looked at them you know how to fish by waiting in the night and allowing the fish to come and rest on your net then you quickly pull it in the morning that's how you were trained but let me show you another technology. Cast your net to the right side. Master, but we only have left and right. <clears throat> this one is not brain work now. This one is not one plus one. I told you one plus one plus God is equal to whatever he says the answer should be. 
one plus one is two but one plus one plus god is not equal to two it's not even equal to ten thousand is equal to any answer that god puts there so one plus one can be equal infinity god said so are we together now i'm saying this to build your faith tonight so that you will believe that God is able to do anything at all. When you look at the way you got to hear about this ministry and the various ways the Holy Spirit worked with you till you came today, you should know already that there is a God in heaven. Are we together now? Brothers and sisters, I present to you this same God who can change your life, who will change your life. I'm saying this so that you don't just sit down and be clapping for others. Wow, this is how God has changed this lady's life. Wow, we are soon going to pray. You must have a desperation and say, Lord, I didn't come tonight to clap for anybody. I left my journey wherever. Lord, I know that you will visit me. And I hold on to the horns of the altar. While you are sitting, the devil is telling you, remember tomorrow by 12, your rent or embarrassment say satan go away and before the presence of god tomorrow is too far god can how many minutes does it take to do a transfer i believe him yes i do i believe him i believe him i believe him i believe he can change my life in one minute i want you to just mention everything you are trusting god to do tonight go ahead Lord, I believe you for this. I believe you for that. Those outside, whether you are standing by the wall, whether you are standing in any of the overflows, and those following online, release your faith. Don't be distracted. Any spirit that distracts you in this moment now is of the devil. It's a Luciferian spirit. Let your spirit and let your attention be open. Yes, Lord, I believe you. Mention it. Don't say it's too big. That's the devil. Too big compared to what? Pray, believers. Lord, I know you are able. You are able to take away this reproach from this family. Talk to Jesus. Even if you find yourself crying, just continue to speak. Lord, you are able. Change this situation. Turn my academics around. Lord, turn my finances around. Lord, I'm in a situation right now where only you, the God of heaven, can arise. Turn my ministry around. Lord, I'm confused. I don't even know where to go right now. I don't know whether to go to the left or to the right, but I receive grace. Pray. Are you praying? Kill unbelief as you are praying. Don't let the devil tell you you are wasting your time. God of heaven. It says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and by supplication, with thanksgiving, it says, make your request known. Don't assume it is known. Make your request known. Lord, I'm here tonight because I want you to turn the situation of my family around. Lord, there is a death sentence over my family, and you have to arise for me tonight. Lord, there is a death sentence over my life. Lord, I've been delayed 10 years of my life. I am backward 10 years. There has to be a way you restore me, oh God. Oh 
Lord, I'm trusting you for the fruit of the womb. The gentleman who came here, seven children lost, including twins. Lord, I'm trusting you to refire my spiritual life. Something has happened to the anointing upon my life. Something has happened to the glory upon my destiny. I'm here tonight, oh God, turn my life around. Turn my life around. Something has happened. The signs and wonders are no more like before. The revelation and the grace and the utterance is not like before. I'm here for a turnaround, oh God. My prayer life has died. I'm here for a reawakening. I no longer fast. I no longer pray. I don't know what has happened to me. I cry for help. Hallelujah. One more prayer point. Lord, I believe you and I believe your servant. I believe that anointing and I believe in its ability to turn my life around. Walk on any unbelief in my heart, oh God, and take it out tonight. Go ahead and pray. Every spirit of doubt, every spirit of fear, Isaiah 61. Please participate in everything we are doing. It's going to be a very fast one, but let your spirit be open. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord, the same Lord that you are instructed to believe, has anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Now listen, this is why he anointed me. Because there is an agenda. But that that agenda cannot be achieved just by a well-meaning heart. It takes more than sincerity to bind up a broken heart. To proclaim liberty. Now I like this one. To proclaim. To declare that the time has come for you to walk free. It says, and the opening of prison. My brothers and my sisters, there can be men physically walking, but they are in prison. Next verse. Verse 2, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all those who mourn. It takes more than a handkerchief to comfort men. It takes the anointing. Verse 3, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Now this is the part I like, to give them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. Hallelujah. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called trees or oaks of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. So the end of it is for God to be glorified but not in the current state. No. So anything in your family Make sure you carry your family along in this miracle service. Don't just stand alone to receive. I've told you if you are blessed and your family members are not blessed, you are not free. You are not free at all. If you are the only one who is alive and everybody is just dying like a chicken, you are still not free. Are we together now? Thank you, Jesus Christ. 
Let me give us one last prayer point. Father, every desire I brought here tonight, I'm not walking back with it. Lift your voice and pray. Every. Let your faith rise as you pray. Shalakata barakatosh. Talato shabrahasikete malakata. Shakatakata barakata barakata barakosh. Every desire. Visit me, O oh God, completely. The God who touches my spiritual life can touch my finances too. The God who touches my body can touch my womb too. Lord, I insist. I insist for completeness. anointing comes upon your life right now then the Lord okay I want to pray a prayer now please be your brother's keeper whether you are inside or outside it's because of what will happen when I pray the anointing will come and people will act out what I'm saying physically that's why I'm saying you should you should just hold them are we together now the Lord is asking me to release speed. Listen, speed is a very powerful thing. When that anointing comes, you will start running like Elijah. That's why I'm saying, hold them. Right now, I stretch my hands inside, outside, online, and I declare, Spirit of the living God, there are men and women here who have been delayed, and speed must come upon them. Right now, I declare at the count of three, one, two, Three, receive that grace. I command speed. Speed right now. Speed. Let the hand of God come upon you. The Bible says the hand of the Lord was upon Elijah and he ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of Ahab down to Israel. I command speed. Receive it. It's coming on you now. Some of this coming on you for the sake of your family. It's not just you alone. It's coming on you. For the sake of your family. Let the chains be broken. I release speed. Speed. In one month. In one month. I'm prophesying that in one month. What has not been done in five years. In one month. Receive that grace. I energize your spirit man. Speed. When speed comes upon a family, you will see it in the result. When speed comes upon your spiritual life, 
when speed comes upon your academics i'm praying again the angels that ride upon the chariots are bringing you speed i release that grace let that anointing come upon you speed speed in the name of jesus christ speed listen fire in the spirit has many significance fire this fire is a mystery it was a reality borrowed from the realm of the spirit that we use here fire does not run away from any element fire is the only thing that all other elements must fit. whether you put metal the metal will be hot wood will be burnt rubber will be melted there is nothing that stands fire other things can stand water but not fire are we together now he said he shall baptize you with the holy ghost and with fire when the holy spirit listen is moving to break chains he moves as fire do you know why because fire destroys every other thing Yet it is not destroyed. It is not solid. It is not liquid. Are we together? It looks like gas, but it's there. You are seeing it. You can't hold it. You can't cage fire. You can't lock it up. It's not restrained by anything. The Holy Ghost is going to move right now in this place as fire. Listen. This fire, I want you to bring those people out. This fire you see will bring an end now believe me when i tell you this will bring an end to many captivities many captivities at the count of three i just want you to shout with me that word fire that word fire and many of you will be surprised in the name of jesus where sam there's a song in my spirit when we sing that song what's the name of that song blow 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 like a mighty wind am i correct so you know what i'm talking about so you sing that song by the time we pray in the name of Jesus I'm stretching my hands right now Spirit of the Lord you seek to reveal yourself as fire that consuming fire no power and no spirit even spirits can be burnt by fire in the name of Jesus I declare that any operation that is not of God at the count of three by the mystery of the Holy Ghost as fire let there be deliverance let there be refining let there be the breaking of chains are you ready now one two three bring them out fire the mystery of fire Blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory. Shaba katala katos. Over us with your wind. Sebreke teka parado shala katana. Blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory. Cover us with your wind.
I declare any chain, if there is anyone under the sound of my voice, and any chain has held your destiny by the mystery of this fire, I'm speaking by this apostolic and prophetic grace. I decree and declare to the heavens at the count of three, may that fire locate chains in this place now. One, two, three, chains be broken. Chains be broken. Chains be broken. Spirit of victory, cover us with your Madam, please clear the way for me. These women, tap these women for me. One, two, and the other person, three. Please come. Mama, I'm going to pray for you. You are welcome. Your first time here? I came here last week. Okay, you were here last week and you too. Um, is, this the, is this the mama I asked to come? I think it's someone else I saw, but well, you are here, we honor you. But I want to pray for you. Madam, look at me. I'm seeing witchcraft in your life and your family. Where are you coming from? Where are you coming from? You are coming from Abuja. I want to pray for you. Hold my hands, man. Look at me. I know you believe in the power of God. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bring to end every oppression of darkness. Mama, I decree and declare, in one month, your life will turn around it to surprise you. In one month. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where is that man that came from my Duguri? The one who came to give a testimony. Mama, let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is saying I should tell you that the oppression is over. Look, I've seen fire. It's leaving my hands and it's coming upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please, where is that man? We have to hurry up. There's, there's a lot to do. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mama, I decree and declare over your life. That fire. The Lord, it looks like you are an elderly woman, but the Lord is going to use you mightily. What you are receiving now is not just a miracle yet. You are receiving an impartation. You will begin to know the Holy Spirit in a very intimate way. Hold my hand. Spirit of the living God, you seek to use this dear mother. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will know the Holy Spirit in supernatural ways. His fire will come upon your life and he will use you in a very mighty way. In the name of Jesus, come. You are the man that came from Eduguri. What is this? I'm receiving an your CV. You are trusting God for a job. And who is this? Hold it. Do you believe that if I pray for you, you are returning with a job? You believe that? Hold my hand. In the name of Jesus, I release the anointing upon you and I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, let there be that miracle. You'll go and return with your job, sir. Let me pray for you, man. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands upon you and I declare that the oppression of darkness comes to an end. A complete end over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. We're going to pray right now, but let me just... Um, the Lord is showing me audio. 
sometimes this time, time, time don't affect you. But I'm praying right now and I'm seeing letters and I'm seeing on the letter congratulations. Listen, and I'm seeing that this is a symbolism of breakthrough. Listen, let me tell you, except God is not God. If this anointing that I'm seeing touches you, then you and your family must stand here and testify. I'm stretching my hands right now. Lord, you are showing me this. In the name of Jesus, this is a symbol of breakthrough. I stretch my hands. Every family and every person that must receive of this grace, I'm stretching my hands now. You must testify. I release upon you that grace. You must testify. I declare whatever it will translate to, whether a job, whether increase, whether promotion, I command it, I declare it, I decree it. In the name of Jesus, I command it, I decree it, I declare it right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hold the hands of this lady, this one. Hold the hands of this lady. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands right now and I declare it's time for your family to rise. I'm speaking it by the spirit of prophecy and I decree and declare every embargo that holds onto that family, I command that it's gone now. In the name of Jesus, it is gone. I curse the power of witchcraft. In the name of Jesus Christ. Stretch your hands towards me. Your hand is a symbol of your productivity. And there are many of you, there is no grace on the works of your hands. I look and in the spirit, I don't see the blessing of the Lord working. That's what is responsible for hardship. It's not like you are not employed or you are not doing this, but in the name of Jesus, I stand representing the Spirit of God and I stretch my hands back to you. I'm declaring still that ministry of fire. Many of you will be surprised. Whatever it is you are involved in, God is about to bring grace upon it. I stretch my hands right now at the count of three. May the fire of God come through your hands into your life. Lord, I pray. In the name of Jesus, whatever has not been working in your life, I force it to work right now. Receive that anointing. I force it to work now. Inside, outside, I force it to work now. Those following online, I pray and I speak whatever it is that you are doing. I declare the blessing. I activate the blessing upon the work of your hand. I take away hardship from your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I take away hardship from your life in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is opening the eyes of people into where your blessing is. I'm seeing fire, still this fire thing coming on the eyes of people physically. You will feel fire burning and ideas. The Lord is birthing things. Is is a birthing in the spirit. I release that grace right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord, all those who must see, show them, oh God, where their blessings are stationed so that they stop dilly-dallying around life. I decree and declare, receive that grace, the grace of an open eye, the grace of an open vision. May the Lord show you where the resources of your destiny is. May the Lord show you where your helpers are. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. This, the prayer is for everybody, eh? But this particular prayer now is for ladies. The Lord is showing me destinies that must be changed. Outwardly, you are beautiful, you are good looking, you are virtuous, you are wonderful. But in the realm of the spirit, it's not what we are seeing physically that we are seeing in the, in the realm of the spirit. A man with an ugly situation sat down at a gate called beautiful. The gate was beautiful, but the man's life was nonsense. There are many people you can stand. I'm, I'm saying everybody, but this is ex specifically for our sisters. And it's not just the issue of marriage. I'm not talking about marriage alone. That there is a fragrance, a presence that can ooze from you and bring favor to your life. But many of you physically, they look at you and you look like you are beautiful, you are this, you are that. But in the realm of the spirit, there are powers sitting on people's destiny. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands. I want to pray for you. That, that force, that veil must be torn. In the name of Jesus, ah, I'm seeing a strange grace that is coming on many people, especially our sisters. I declare any wrong identity that you are given in the realm of the spirit that is not a reflection of your true identity, any exchange that has been made in the realm of the spirit so that physically you should be blessed, but in the realm of the spirit you are carrying another person's destiny. Right now, by the fire of the Holy Ghost, sisters, may that anointing come upon you now. May that grace come upon you now. I declare anyone's destiny here that has been changed and switched and manipulated in the realm of the spirit so that what you look like is not a reflection of what your destiny is. I change it now in the name of Jesus. I change it now in the name of Jesus. Listen. A man's destiny can be exchanged. It's true. Have you not read in the Bible where kings slaughtered their children to prolong their own lives. A man's destiny can be a shadow of something else. You know you are alive, but this is not your life. You know that you are living another person's script. I'm saying it again. In the name that is above all names. Sir, come. I don't know you, but I want to pray for you, sir. God is going to turn your life around. Uh, you see this prayer that I'm saying generally, this prayer, sir, is for you. You are a shadow of your life, of your, is your dad? Where did he come from? From my there. From where? From my there. Daddy, I'm going to pray for you. This is not just about your leg. Huh? This is about your destiny. I want to pray for you. Hold my hands, sir. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare, In the name of Jesus, anyone who has exchanged your destiny, sir, I decree and declare restoration now. You are the daughter, hold my hands, I pray for you. Look at me. You are a wonderful lady, huh? But bad things continue to happen in your life. Huh? You are a nice lady. Are you married? Am I worried that one? Don't worry. I know why I'm saying. You get what I'm saying now? Yes, sir. Because what I'm seeing, this is a spirit. 
you are a nice lady but people continue to misunderstand you yes, sir. Yes, good sir. things and people look at you in the eye of many people now you are you are a devil you are a terrible lady yes, but it's sir. not true yes, you have a very beautiful heart this is what happens when do you know that there are spirits that make sure you are misrepresented in the eyes of people a ministry can be under this captivity no matter the bible said don't let your good be evil spoken of you can be nice to somebody like it's happening to many of you and people end up fighting you you bought something for them and they end up you are saying what is this i prayed for you and the person says so you are trying to say i'm the one who is not spiritual it's a spirit my dear i want to pray for you well eh? this thing is not just about your marriage that is you know things have gone wrong you're a wonderful lady eh? favor will come close to you but then never enter your life yes, sir. what yes, do sir. you do i'm working in a security How, you are a security yes sir did you go to school yes sir i'm running my master's you are running your master's yes, sir. my dear do you believe god can change your life yes, now sir. i believe that hold my hands to appoint unto them you see that to appoint this one is a prophet's reward it's not just that god is saying do this there is something in the spirit called a prophet's reward the possibilities that accompany an office i declare in the name of the god of heaven whom i represent may your life change this night in a way that will surprise you listen i lift you from this security work you are doing and I put you in a position that befits your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. Daddy, sir, I'm praying for your daughter in your presence. This lady will come here and give a testimony that even you as a father will say this one is the Lord's doing. Are we together now? I declare it. I decree it done right now. Hear me. I don't care whether you are working or not. If you are not in the rightful place, as ordained by God. I want to pray a very serious prayer because there are people, the work you are doing is a nonsense work. That work is, it has robbed your spiritual life. It has destroyed your relationship. Because of that work, no man can see you to marry you. Demonic work that closes you everywhere. I decree and declare, I stand by this apostolic and prophetic grace. If you are in a place that is not your assigned place of destiny, I take you out of that place and I shift you to the place of destiny. I shift you. I shift you in the spirit. I shift you by prophecy. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen. If the widow of Zarephath was not where the prophet met her, that's how her miracle would have gone. It matters that you are in the right place at the time God sends your miracle. Some of these things in the name of employment, they are traps of the devil. I'm not saying it's not good to work, don't get me wrong. But many of them are traps from the peace of hell. There are people whose spiritual lives have gone down from heaven to earth. Simply in the name of job. Are we together? Nonsense job. That on Sunday you're on your way going to church, your boss calls you and says you must come and resume. What shall it profit a man if you gain the... What is it? Is that the whole world? How much is the salary? Lose your soul for peanuts. I declare again, in the name of Jesus, may my God relocate someone here by the power of the Holy Spirit. May my God relocate a destiny, relocate a family, if you are not in your assigned place, I shift you tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Do you know, listen, we're going to pray for the sick shortly. There are people that if the devil wants to destroy them, he will make sure they get visa. Ah, Pastor Jay, it's good to see you. There are people that the devil wants to destroy them. They will get visa to UK. They think it's breakthrough, but they have gone away from their place of destiny. God spoke to Jonah. Go to Nineveh. Jonah entered a boat 
on his way to Tarsus. And because of that wrong journey, people lost their properties. People lost. He entered a boat and made people to start destroying their lives. They were almost dying because a man was not in sync with seasons. Let me tell you this. It matters that God meets you at the place where your blessing is waiting for you. The devil can relocate people and, and destroy your life. There are many Nigerians outside this country whose destiny is ordained by God to be in this country. You see them roaming around like armed robbers around the world in the name of abroad. And there are others whose destinies are abroad and the devil will make sure that he will peg them somewhere. And Isaac sowed in that land. It's not just that he sowed. The place he sowed matters. Isaac sowed in that land. Abraham, take now thy son and go. Go to a location. That's where I will meet with you. God is everywhere. But destiny does not meet with men everywhere. You must have the discernment to understand your season of visitation. I repeat this. You see me speaking like this. I'm speaking by the Spirit. There are some of you, it's an instruction from God to you. Don't be careless about your life. Look at how many Nigerians. You go to embassies and see Nigerians. They want to go abroad by fire, by force. Ask them why. They will say greener pastures. I've told you, greener pastures is not in any physical location on earth. Greener pastures is in the world. When I sent thee, lackest thou anything? Not when he went. Jesus instructed them and said, do not go. Go only to the lost tribe of Israel. Don't go outside that camp. Because salvation was for the Jews first. If they went to the Gentiles, they would have received a root shock. Direction. Direction. Please, in one minute, before we pray for the sick, lift your voice and say, Lord, direct me. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. Direct me. There is a way that cement right unto a man, unto a woman, unto a family. Direction. Your blessing is not just generically in US or UK. There are people suffering in every nation. It takes the leadership of the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, two things we are going to do very quickly. And I know you have been doing this, but please, I want to plead with you to do it with understanding. Most times we do things in this kingdom without understanding. That's why we are not blessed. Are we together? We are going to pray for the sick now. Don't walk out here if you expect to walk back the same way. Come here convincing, knowing that God is going to touch you. And while we are doing that, um, your prayer, if you don't have your prayer request, please write it quickly. Write it quickly. And in case your faith, you came here with a faith that is weak, you did write some vital things, you can add it quickly. Those online, you can send it you can send your prayer request very quickly. Now, we are going to do this very fast because our time is gone. Thank God Pastor Jakes is here. Are we together? Now, overflow. Listen, let's not be rowdy. Overflow one outside. We'll walk to your projector stand. Overflow two. you also walk to your projector stand. Overflow three. Walk to your projector stand. Those who are in here, you are trusting God to touch you, to touch your family members. You can make your way and come and stand orderly in front here now. Please, quickly, quickly. Let's do that very quickly. While we are doing that, please, if you have written your prayer request, I want you to wave it. And ushers, you may find a way of splitting yourselves very quickly. Let's, let's have ushers. If the ushers are not in our PR department, you can join them. And then let's make it very fast. Make sure everyone's request 
um, is obtained, please, for those online, I want you to believe by faith. If you are still here to write, just write it. Ushers, please. There are hands all around. Let's help out. Protocol can also help so that we'll make sure that everyone's request. If it's a text on your phone and you don't have the opportunity to write it down while I'm praying, you can just connect with it. It's not just a ritual. Believe in what we're doing. the name of Jesus, we stand by this corporate grace and this corporate anointing. Pastor Jax Ejimi there, um, Pastor Alpha, Benga, Overflow, one. Pastor Femi, Promise, Overflow, two. Please, quickly, quickly. Let's go there and let's trust God to touch the people. God has anointed this ministry and he has given us the grace to be the extension of the hand of Jesus over your life. And I want you to agree. I want you to believe. The worship team will lead us. The moment is for praise and worship while we pray. And please listen. Except the people are prophesying to you or they are talking to you. Just a touch. I want you to believe by faith. Are we together? You don't have to start giving them an explanation. This is why I'm here. Don't worry. Just connect by faith. If there is a word for you, the word will be given to you. Otherwise, just believe by faith. Father, we thank you. You call this place Koinonia and this meeting a miracle service. Lord, we pray for those online and those within. We decree and declare. Let there be a free flow of the power of the Holy Spirit. Let the sick be healed. Let the oppressed be delivered. Lord, let this touch not just be the touch of men. Let it be the touch of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, let every one of these people come and testify here. In the name of Jesus. Now, those of you who, when you submit your prayer request, don't just be staring. This is not a cinema. You should be praying. Are we together? Because shortly after this, I will pray on this and I will speak over our lives. Prophecy is very powerful. So whilst you are standing there, whether you are, you know, up here or down, you should be prayerful, spiritualize your mentality. Now is not the time to laugh around and be talking carelessly. Let your spirit be alive. Hallelujah. God bless you. Be healed right now in Jesus' name. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Be healed right now.
darkness is leaving, breakthrough is coming. Heaven touches earth in this place. Oppression is lifted, shackles are breaking, heaven touches earth in this place, oh, in this place. That's what my 
Just pray in the spirit in one minute. Those following from any nation of the world, I'd like you to just pray. We're just going to pray and speak over this. Go ahead. Stretch your hands. We're praying on this request. Father, let your people return with testimonies. In the cross, Sazia Sahasa Barakatosha Brada Gadabaladaba Rakata Branda Gadabaladabush Ebratos Kadabrandi Gadabaladabush Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let impossible situations Scriptures be turned around by the Spirit about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So, as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And don't he meditates day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, you believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever.
have a going to bear. And we know that we give you praise. Your season will not pass by. We will forever shine and we will forever We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as the like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us. Because we know that whatever content here is going to see you on calls at any time. It's going to make you attain whatever stage that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. your spirit. Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory. Father, we thank you. Thank you for angels, the release of angels. Angels on assignment. Angels bringing solutions and answers to prayers. Father, we give you praise because many will stand before you to give testimony and give glory to your name. For in the name of Jesus, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It has been declared in the name of Jesus every request here. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, we turn it into testimonies. And let some of them begin to manifest from this night. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let it be by the grace of God that by this time next month, you will, you will almost not have any requests to write. In the name of Jesus Christ. Our time is gone, but I want you to lift your hands. I want to speak over your life now. Apostle, why do we do this all the time? Because this is how you program the destinies of people. These words you see, they are not just languages. It's not just the speaking. You know, I never cease to be amazed at how people's lives change overnight just because a word the bible says he sent a word to jacob not he spoke he sent a word to jacob and it lighted upon israel hallelujah and he blessed them saying and he blessed them not thinking saying in the name of jesus i decree and i declare that this month of September you are entering, let it be called your season of strange results. Let it be called your season of strange results. Anyone who has despised the grace of God upon your life, in the name of Jesus, may God use your life to prove a point. I decree and declare over your spiritual life a new vista of insight and access into the mysteries of the spirit I release it upon you right now if you are a man of God here I pray may your ministry shift to a new dimension if you are a woman of God here I pray may your ministry enter a new dimension of power I declare that someone here may you encounter the power of God raw, the raw power of God the same way God comes to man may his power come to you may you know the mysteries of the power of God in the name of Jesus Christ I speak over your life this is a family of great favor I declare if this grace is not yet speaking in your life I declare by the hand of God Almighty who brought that anointing upon my life and this house may favor practical favor begin to follow you from today in the name of Jesus Christ what you cannot do for yourself I ask my God to do it for you in this season. If you're a man of God here, I prophesy to you that the next time you stand upon this altar to dispense the word of God, may you see a dimension of the spirit through your life and your ministry that will surprise you. I know that there are many of us that are trusting God for all kinds of financial breakthrough. I've taught you the principles of finances, but there is a prophetic dimension of wealth. Are we together now? And in the name of Jesus, I declare 
the same grace that carried a raven and it brought bread to Elijah I decree and declare may that same grace carry your blessings and locate you with it in this season in the name of Jesus I pray for every family represented here in the name of Jesus and I say this from the depth of my heart enough is enough I prophesy it again enough is enough whatever represents setbacks in any family I stand by the anointing of the Holy Spirit and I command that an end comes to it this night every graduate here that is trusting God for a job you heard the testimony here in the name of Jesus Christ both where you applied and where you didn't apply may the angel of the Lord see to which that a miracle job locates you those who are in business here in the name of Jesus business is spiritual the grace that will cause your business to command strange results may that grace come upon you in the name of Jesus Christ if there is anyone here in any kind of trouble that needs the hand of God that means if God does not step in for you you know you are in trouble I stand by the gift of prophecy and I decree and declare over your life come out of that trouble now whether it's a financial trouble whether it's whatever come out of it now in the name of Jesus Christ every attack on your destiny I decree and declare from tonight by the assignment of angels we ward off that attack in Jesus name whoever has been destined by God to help you rise and either because of witchcraft or insensitivity in the spirit he has not been able to locate you in the name of Jesus I declare I call them by the spirit and I command that they locate you <laughs> believe in every prayer that we're praying we're entering the ember months and many people associate this month with all kinds of demonic activity minus you <laughs> I say it again minus you everyone who is part of this prophetic family and connected to this family I declare the mystery of exemption over you in the name of Jesus Christ that when men say there is a casting down I welcome you into the greatest months that you have to face for this year I decree and I declare over your life we're rounding up there are some of you nothing ever works in your life it's not like you are lazy it just doesn't work except it fails you to the point that even when you see success you are afraid of it because you know it will not last I declare not only will you be successful I command your results to last I say it again by the Spirit I command your results to last I forbid you from this experience of up today and down tomorrow in the name of Jesus Christ any door that was once open and is now closed I reopen it in Jesus name I hope you believe everything I'm saying please believe it with all your heart I pray for every student here I don't know what challenge you may be having or I don't know what you are trusting God for in the name of Jesus I pray particularly for students that are supposed to have graduated and one thing or the other is keeping them I don't care what needs to be done let it be done to move you in the name of Jesus Christ I say it again let it be done to move you There are some of our young ones that just wrote post UME 
in the name of Jesus, there are some of you who the results you have seen now, from that result you will not get anything serious. I change that result now. I change that result now. I change that result now. Believe it, you are too young to walk in unbelief. I change that result now. Anyone assigned here programmed that you must die or that your loved ones as we enter this ember, whether by accident as you are moving, listen, no, I know our time is gone, but I'm praying a very important prayer. Believers are careless and that's why sometimes we allow the devil to take advantage of us. I declare, whether by air or by land, whether on bike, kekena pep, if it will crash, you will never enter it. I say it again. If that fake cool is doomed for accident, then I take you out of it. But in the name of Jesus, if you enter it, then it must not crash. I pray for your finances again. That in the name of Jesus, the worship team sang here and said, Ebenezer, there is a God that can help men. I pray for you directly, finance. That's the prayer I'm praying for you now. I know you love God already. I'm not doubting your passion for God. But the resources that it will take, especially for you, my dear brothers, it takes a lot for a young man to be established. And it's not a blessing if you are just going old and old and old and you have to beg for tea and bread every day. In the name of Jesus, the grace that helps men, that can take a man from nowhere and establish him, because you have believed the Lord, I command your establishment now. He said, keep us, lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. I pray for you. Any orchestration of evil, a trap of Satan, so that you will enter and it will destroy your life. Quarter to getting into that trap. I declare in the name of Jesus, may the Lord rescue you out of it. Two or three more prayers and we're done. Any friend in your life, any useless association in your life that is not profiting you spiritually, destiny-wise, financially, I caught it from the realm of the spirit this night. I ate it out of your life in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you, there is a saying, show me your friends and I will show you your destiny. Some of us love God, but the demon in our life is the spirit that keeps bringing the worst of every kind of friend. You are born again, but the people that come to like you, to want to marry you, are people who don't love God. Or you are a nice, well-meaning brother, but your friend is an arm robber. Your friend is a 419er. Your friend, what? Any kind of wrong relationship, whether you are aware or not, in the name of Jesus, I'm speaking to you. Let there be a separation right now. And I pray for you. If there is any deceiver in your life, may my God expose them in this season. I know you don't like the prayer, but let me pray for you. If there is any deceiver in your life, I say it again, may the God of heaven expose them in this name. Whatever has tampered with your love for God, there is something called first love. First love is fire, fire for God. 
fire for the house of God that they have to advise and encourage you now and say let us go he said I was glad not I was angry not I was dragging let me tell you if the passion for the house of God is dying in your life it's not a sign of spiritual growth it's a sign of an attack even if you think it's happening because you are a man of God that church they are not sharing anything that spirit is the spirit of the Antichrist I declare fresh passion for the things of God fresh passion for the house of God you used to wake up in the morning and the first thing you think about is your Bible but now you wake up the first thing is your phone the first thing is email the first thing is uh, what they call all those things social media all those things you are doing and before you know it you spend one hour there you say let me just do it for five minutes you wake up by three o'clock and you say i will study my bible but quickly you watch nigerian film all kinds of things in the name of jesus those things are not bad don't get me wrong but i don't care whatever it is if it is as taking the position of god i declare let it return back to its rightful position let me rebuke the spirit of laziness before we share the grace because let me tell you i have seen people as a man of god and as a leader i have seen people who will never become anything listen nigerians and especially we around here let's trust god for grace to be serious when a young man is snoring your way you are sleeping you watch movie till 1 a.m and then you sleep till 11 a.m. You are signing poverty with your destiny. Both God and Satan agree that laziness leads to suffering. Are we together? There are many of us here. I, I don't hate you. You know I love you with all my heart. But your deliverance needs to be laziness. 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 I'm not as concerned about our sisters. But these our brothers. You are the ones I'm talking to. That doesn't mean that sisters should be lazy because some of you, God is even speaking to you through this. Reduce those movies, reduce all those Facebook things and all of that and sit down. Gentlemen, receive grace. Grace to stay awake when others are sleeping. Believers are lazy people and we just imagine that just because we have the anointing things will happen just like that If you are a man here and you are a married man, please hear me and you know you are not catering for your family I love you, but I'm telling you the truth by the word of God. You are not being responsible No matter what the excuse is receive grace tonight to sit down and find out what do I need to do to feed my family? Let no man believer here born of God you return back home and there's no food and they are asking you and you are acting as if daddy have not paid school fees say what will I do is he responsible is he responsible before you have a child think and plan what are we going to do with this child that is coming not just that you give birth and then you start inconveniencing people in the name of Jesus I declare the discipline to be diligent and the discipline to be responsible I release it upon you now Every entitlement mentality that makes you believe someone somewhere should walk and just come and give you free success. I cancel that wrong mentality now. Yeah. Hallelujah. We speak peace over Zaria. Yeah. We speak peace over Kaduna State. Yeah. And we speak peace over this nation. Yeah. We decree and declare that whether it's in the political or the economic sphere, we declare that Christ must be glorified in this season. In the name of Jesus Christ. And for all of you who are doing one thing or the other, whether job, whether ministry, whatever it is, I declare multiplication of results. In the name of Jesus Christ. Before we take the altar call, I want to encourage you, please listen, please listen. Everyone, next week, Friday, next week we're going to have Koinonia on Sunday. It's, 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 it's our SOM graduation, we'll announce that shortly. But on Friday, please listen, we're all waiting upon the Lord, we're fasting, okay? 
there's no koinonia so we're going to trust god please when we say wait upon the lord minimum minimum at least minimum four o'clock if you fast and end by 12 except you are a child or except you are on a serious medical this thing if if you are not on a medical program and you fast and end by 12 i think you are lazy to whom much is given much is required six hours alone is too small you have to be serious and if you fast and all you do is sleep god too will have to forgive you because you didn't maximize is this not the fast i have commanded there is a fast that is hunger starvation but there is a genuine fast listen to messages so friday please uh, media make sure you announce it friday we are fasting and we are fasting the goal listen carefully three things number one our spiritual health are we together number two we're interceding for this ministry we're speaking the next level we're declaring we're praying over this ministry are we together now and then the third you can add whatever prayer point but particularly our spiritual lives and then you are praying for the ministry and you know prayer band take note of this and all other departments take note every department should allocate some time at least that you can pray hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you